Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows. On this episode, we talk to Way Graham and Renato Mulatalo, talk about their time at the Sharks. Uh, is Nico the man for Origin? And dive really deep into what makes Fitzy a great coach. So really interesting listen. Goes for about two hours and we dive into many different topics. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm not gonna sit there and cry about it or complain about it. Dale's full tilt all the time. That's just how he's wide. He's you live off 350 bucks a week? Is yeah, that... yeah, so I had to lift it up because the inflation's brother. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Ebbs and Flows, where we talk about the highs and lows, ins and outs, fears and doubts, on and off the field. Today, I am joined, oh, first of all, I am your host, Ice. Shout out to my brand partner, Sporting News Australia, for helping you bring this production together. Joined today by a couple Sharks greats and up and coming great, <laughs> Wade Graham and Renato Mulatalo. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's good to be back, mate. You've changed over the years. New room for me. I haven't been this one, so looking yeah. good. Oh, pumped to have you on board. Uh, first of all, we'll talk Origin. Obviously, your guys kept, oh, not captain, your guys halfback um, is up for the mix. You've paid New South Wales. Who would you pick before for the halves? Right now? With right the now. Current, I, I'd, I'd still go Nico. I think he deserves his shot. Um, and then halves, it sort of suits him a bit better now because he'd be on the right-hand side of the field for clearly right for kicker. Um, but I really would have liked, I would have enjoyed to see him play with Nath. Uh, I just think, I understand the combination between um, obviously Nathan and, and Jerome and with Isaiah Yo there in particular and that it's easy for them to play that structure but I just think you know the, the strength of Queensland and the strength of the halves part like pairing it's, it's not so much the opportunities when you play like off Nathan which Jerome and Isaiah Yo plays to Nathan it's you need to play to take the ball away from him when the opportunity comes up elsewhere and that's what Nico would have done it would have been if the Queensland set up on Nath, wherever he was, and the opportunity came down the short side or on the other side of the field, Nico would have he would have <coughs> took that space. That's how he plays. Where I feel like because of the Penrith combination, they just wait to Nath to get around the field. So yeah. hopefully one day we get to see them two play together because I think they could be um, really good. But I think at this stage. You know, I think Nico deserves his shot, and I think Jerome will stay there. I thought he was pretty good in game one. Yeah, I thought he was awesome too. Um, just this the way that Penrith play, and I oh, we'll had the Penrith boys in there before, and they said that system took like years. And I know they try to plug that in straight away. Do you reckon they need to change that style of play? Because obviously, Nave holds the middle part of the field. When I watch the Sharks play, and when I watch Nico, like the thing I love about Nico is the variations of the shapes that he has. But it's usually from a 70-30 split, and it goes like seven-six-one, and you guys stripping yeah. down the edges. Like, do you reckon that style of play could work in Oregon? because when I hear Origin players talk they say it's all about the small moments all about the small moments when I watch the Sharks play it's like beautiful it's like pretty to watch yeah I think that's the hardest thing with that is when you have those combinations in the key positions like you can throw Appy in there too because he played so many years at, at Penrith for those boys you know it's not necessarily that those combinations are going to get around and play the way they normally play at club level but it makes it hard for the other guys to get in it makes it harder for Tedesco to get in to that combo because he doesn't know he's not a hundred percent up to speed with their communication or what they're even looking at sometimes it's not even how you talk it's what you see and the other players because they're in that structure together they're all looking at the same thing so it's harder for those other guys to get in there and express their strengths because in the large chunk of the, the spine are taking over mm. i feel like if you have more players who you know they play what's in not play what's in front. They play to space. They count the numbers. They don't necessarily let the structure take over the game. They wait for the opportunities from the opposition to pop up, and then they go and they they sit like they seek out that opportunity. They seek the space or they seek the numbers to overlap, which is what you know, which is what Cameron Munster does really well for you know <coughs> club level in Queensland. He lets the structure go apart, but then when he sees an opportunity to play. His, his, op his moment, which is the moments <laughs> we're talking about, he, he ices it, which is what I was saying a bit before. Like, if, if you put Nico with Nath, you know, Nath is going to touch the ball 50 times, but it's the five times he probably doesn't touch the ball, which is when the, the defence is overcompensated on him. You need the other half to really take that, on, take that on and be aware of that when it's going to pop up, and that's what Nico's strength is, playing the space, counting the numbers. Yeah. What do you think the, the criticism around, well, obviously a very origin time of the year, the criticism around Tedesco, and you're, you playing that back three, do you reckon his criticism's been fair from game one? As a former Queensland Greek. <laughs> 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 no, I, no, no, I think it's so funny that... Um, for, for a player that's dominated the game for so long that how quick everyone can change on him and, and the respect that, that everyone forgets about um, 
you know, it's it's kind of sad to see because you know he still comes out and he's still probably one of the most feared players in my eyes. I mean, I come against the Roosters, I'm like, fuck, like all we talk about is yeah. Tedesco. You can't you can't just go out and get him because he's he's just so flighty. And I think that um, I think Queensland understand how good he is, mm. and I think the public still kind of don't, and and they've kind of forgotten that bit. But um, as a back three, like. Will be a, will be honestly honestly a big honor to to play against or play with someone like that and and have that kind of caliber and um, you saw what he did in the World Cup and he led he led them um, to you know, obviously win the World Cup and there's kind of attributes that no one sees I think I think he's a he's a dominant leader within their group like he's not one to come out be Larry and and all that jazz and I th- I feel like he's much like Waiter right like doesn't he say much it's just when they talk. You listen, yeah, and, and he's. Got, I think that's the kind of leadership that he brings into those camps and and within those players and brings the best out of the players. So uh, I so, think. Yeah. So if you're lining up for Queensland as you could have back in the day, um, what fullback wouldn't you want to see out of? Because obviously, like this is probably the biggest selection headache that Origins ever had ever. Like you, normally, you know who's coming straight in, but in terms of fullbacks, you got Tommy Turbo there, yeah. Latrell's coming back, and Teddy. Would Teddy be the one you wouldn't want back there? Yeah, Teddy. 100%. Like, uh, I just feel like he's he's those guys, he's one of those players that just pop up everywhere. Like, you know, he, and he's got that um, that ability just to run 200, 300 metres and, and eat up the middle. And when we play the Roosters as well, like, if he gets going, man, like, he just brings their middles to life. He brings their whole team to life. And, and yeah. that's the thing that kind of hurts you and you're just on the back foot the whole time. So, I think but with the balance, of shape. I yeah. think with the balance of that, but, um, you know, it allows you with those three you just said, Turbo and Latrell and Teddy it allows you to get all three into the into the team, right? Which is a big. It's always been a strength of ours when those three guys play together. Um, there's no doubt we miss Latrell and how you know, powerful he can be and how dynamic he can be out of the backfield. Mm. And and because we didn't execute, I just think we weren't connected that well in, in game one. Like we didn't. It looked like we were playing a power game and trying to play fast, which actually ended up hurting us a little bit because we didn't quite execute um, our moments. We saw in the first half like Teddy. You know, nine times out of ten, he passes to the fox there, and, and he scores. Yeah, that's weird, right? Yeah. Because we're all, we're all, I reckon, we're just a bit overspeed in our minds, and just we just weren't a hundred percent connected across the park. It, it hurt us. I, I feel like they'll be in better shape for the run in game two. Although it is a, it's a big ask going up to Suncorp. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Oh yeah. Um, I kind of like the dynamic of like everyone started talking about Reynolds and Cody Walker, yeah. and if I'm if I'm Freddie and they say his job's on the line. I'm only going off speculation. Like, I think I'd almost go down that line. Like, well, it's a good, it's a good option. Like, <laughs> again, can't complain, eh? see, and that's that's the thing. Like, when you talk about pairings, like, you look at Adam and Cody. You know, I talked about it before. Like, they're not so much going to be structure. Like, Adam is going to kick the boys in good positions. He's going to play the field position game. He's going to be simple with his communication. He's probably going to let the forwards do their work and the OBs do their work. Just come in at the back end of sets when, you know, to kick and get an opportunity. But you know, Cody's going to play all over the field. He's just going to play and attack and run and support mm. and just play, play the space, you know, and play the numbers. So that they're a good combination for that sort of arena because that sort of arena structure, yeah, it's it's not like you know you had the boys in here, um, Fisher Harris and Leota, and they said it took years to understand that structure and for all of them to be on the same page. You only got a week in Origin to sort of get. Um, get the team connected and, and understanding what they're trying to achieve and what their goals are in, in, in attack and D. So I think sim- like simplified, like the more simple it is, the better. And you just need to have the opportunity, the eyes and the know-how to take the opportunities when they present. So it's a, it's a good, it's a big, um, big decision for Freddie because if his job is on the line, like <laughs> who are you going to back? You're going to back the guys you had in game one who you, who you thought, bar a couple of injuries, you know, you pick the team that you think is going to get the job done or do you just completely rip it apart and, and, and throw a new combination in there, so... What would you do? What would I do? <laughs> I'd go Nico. I'd go Nico, like I said. I think he, he'd he had the seven on his back, but he wouldn't... He'd be playing both sides of the ball. He'd pop up at second receiver. I think how he... A lot would depend on his communication with the hooker and, and say if Jerome was there again, like what sort of looks they were expecting to get to. Yeah. But I think he, <coughs> over the last 18 months, probably deserves deserves his shot. Mate. He's been like one of the premier <coughs> elite mm. playmakers. 
Yeah, and he's not going to be phased by a son court, would he? No, well, I get, like you say that, that's why Adam Reynolds is so appealing too, right? He plays there, he's yeah, that's that's the his backyard, home ground. Hey, that's like, the backyard now. Yeah, <laughs> so he's had so much success in a short time at, uh, at Brisbane. And if there's one guy you want to sort of get in there, who you know is going to be steady for you and just do his job and kick, kick the team into good positions, mm. that's probably Ad, so... You know, a lot comes down to this weekend of footy, I reckon. Yeah, it's pretty exciting, isn't yeah, it? It's good. Like, just it's as good. a, like, a, I go for Queensland, like, as a casual, but it's pretty exciting to listen to all, everyone else's different takes. So, yeah, yeah. I found it interesting, because normally it's like, oh, Nathan's in and, and Jerome's in. It's been cool to have something, like, a little bit different. Yeah, it's probably a position we haven't um, been in for a long time. And I know you said it's normally simple to pick the teams, or, like, at least in the key positions, but we've had a lot of guys, particularly New South Wales, just putting their hand up and playing good, right? mm like Dylan Edwards, we haven't even mentioned him at know. fullback. Um, we had Lat- like Latrell, he's obviously playing fullback at Clubland and m- one of the most dynamic players in the competition. So do you, you have the ability to move him or do we leave him there at fullback and you know find another good centre? Like Campbell Graham's been killing it, he's back this weekend. Yeah. You know, Critter's been playing well. <laughs> and then you go... Got some guys, eh, bro? Yeah, got some greedy guys. over there, yeah. 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 Say like with Turbo, there's question marks about Turbo. He wasn't playing that well. Is he 100% fit? But like, you can never knock a, a champion, and he's a champion. Like he's one of the. I know he hasn't um, had the great greatest eighteen months because of his body, but you know when he's on, he's like probably the best player in the competition. So. Yeah, there's some guys you just throw in an Origin and always. Yeah. I remember Jenko was always yeah. like, no matter like he. I think he made Origin out of reserve grade one one year. When well, he was Jimmy Maloney Windsor. too. You just know like <laughs> he could be rat's ass for two weeks. Didn't get picked, and then he rolls in game two, gets man of the match. Like yeah. Kicks every goal from the sideline because that's just... That's it, and it's pissing yeah. down with rain too, just sliding him over. <laughs> yeah. um, question, it might be a bit of a different one. In terms of coaching staff, when, when I look at Freddie, when I look at Joey, that's probably our generation, and those guys rock up into our camp, would run for a brick wall for him. Um, now the generation's gone like a decade past. And like, say, I'll give you an example. So say if like Wally Lewis had given us lessons or Mal Meninga. I didn't really watch those guys play. So I, I've heard about how great they were and I've seen highlights, but it wouldn't have that impact where you look at someone like Queensland, got JT, got <laughs> Cam Smith, yeah. Billy. Yeah. Like you look at Reese Walsh, he's yeah. like, one, he's get picked over KP straight away. Two, he's picked by the best fullback to ever play the game. Yeah. And then three, he throws on that maroon armour. Like how can you not? his debut game not be like that. Do you reckon, and I don't think there's any better substitutions for them, but do you reckon the coachings in, the, in today's modern day players, is there a big difference there? Or am I just fucking I think there, w- there would be a difference for sure. Like one guy we haven't spoken about is Josh Hennay. Like he's our yes. assistant coach at um, the Sharks and he's he does all the uh, behind the scenes stuff, no doubt, for the Queensland team. Um, mate, he's a gun. He's like a he's gun. a gun. What makes him good? Is he the one who used to take ages to kick a ball, eh? Oh, yeah, he, he, was, he was a goal kicker. He was a goal kicker. He's just, mate, he, like, he understands where the modern game's at pretty much with the, like, the rules and the interpretation, you know, what the trends are in the game. But he's like straight to the point, like communicates well. Um, there's no bullshit about him. He's just like, he just, he's just got it, mate. Like he took over when um, the, the club made a decision to sign Fitzy. And moved Johnny Morris on, but he, so he took over his interim. Mm. And like for a guy who I had nothing to do with before he came to the club, like I reckon within half a season, man, I had so much respect for him as a coach. And um, he's the next young gun coach, man, off the ranks. I, I, I yeah. feel a bit like worried about saying it, like publicly, because yeah, he eventually might be he's going to get the attention. Well, I, I want to keep him at the Sharkies all all the time, but <coughs> I have no doubt um, whatsoever that he's doing a lot of the behind the scenes stuff just to help Billy and. You know Cam and JT out because they're not in the day to day, week to week grind of you know coaching in NRL and running sessions and planning the weeks. Where Hedy is and uh, he he's unbelievable. So and that's the thing where I know the Blues have Mary who's been in that system, but they don't really have a a coach who's right now right in you know the the game this season last season. There's, yeah, there's Freddie yeah. Brandy, Mary, um, obviously Badiris is there too. So you know maybe. Um, you know, possibly, quite possibly, we, we, we are lacking that little bit of and that, the, the hard part is, is because the Queensland was so dominant for so long. Like, like if you went off the, if the winning halves from when New South Wales finally jagged one, it'd be like Hocko and Reynolds. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So like the level of halves that 
due to success, I don't know. I, I think about that little stuff a little bit, eh? I was, yeah. telling, I was telling the boys the other day, cause obviously my short life in uh, Queensland <laughs> camp uh, <laughs> before they found the imposter. But um, yeah, like I, when I went in and Billy was our backs coach um, and it was like me, Reese, Reese was meant to debut in 2021. Yeah. Um, like Kyle Feld and Val uh, were in there as well. And I remember he got us into this meeting and he's like such a like technical man. Like he- They say that, he, yeah. He's like a, he's like a yeah, maniac at it and gets us in this room. And um, I was thinking, oh, we must be having a normal back five meeting, blah, blah, blah. And he pulls out his little iPad, bro. And he goes, it's this dog chaperoning this horse, like following this horse. So when the horse goes right, the dog's like chasing it, like mm. just getting in front of it. And he's like, this is how you got to be at the like effing back. If you want to be a bit, like good fullback or a good outside back. This is the difference. You got to be like this dog, and we're just watching this clip of this horse getting, <laughs> getting chased by this dog and like followed by this dog. He's like, you got to fucking stalk it when it, you got to anticipate when it's gonna move. You move, and like, you saw that in Reese Walsh's games and and how he played on in Origin as well, and you know, the anticipation, every reaction kind of thing. And I think just by seeing that, I kind of looked at it and I was just like, man, that's. That dude would have done that every like every day of his life in his footy career. And, he and never he never missed a line break. No, nah. eh? Will Kennedy like, he, he never yeah. misses yeah. it too. Wonder what the key is to good support. What, what did he say? Did he teach you? Nah, he just that? nah. He kept the yeah. Just, yeah. just kind of. I think you just got to keep your feet moving. Yeah. Anticipation, yeah. no reaction. That, yeah, that's all it would be he'd sure. jump in our drills and just look like he could play yeah. NRL still. Like he would get in and just do something freakish, and I'm like, what the hell, this guy's the level. Like that's annoying. Yeah, I played a World Cup with both Billy and Cameron. And like they obviously had that years and years to play together, but Billy like he was even like that as a player. Like he's he would run the back five sessions, yeah. and then we get onto the field, you know. And I was in the back row. Like he'd talk for a whole his talk for a set Bro. was unbelievable. He'd be like controlling the middles at the rock, talking about whatever shape that is, and then like over the back of it. Yeah, wait, I'll be on the back of you in two plays. Like yeah, he's sorting it oh, all out. Wow. Like, so his level of understanding and footy like IQ is through the roof. Where, and he would be like the play-by-play, play, playing every play um, talk. And then there was Cameron, who was the captain and the hooker, who would just, he'd play, he'd take control of the long game and t take care of, you know, the field position and where I'm putting the team. Mm. Just constantly, um, you know, putting the team in, in the right places to allow the likes of, you know, Billy and, and JT and, and Cooper to take over and play their footy. So it was sort of like, yeah, Billy... He'd be like the play-by-play -play guy, but then yeah. Cameron would be the long game. He'd understand what the team right needed at that time, in that moment, and he'd get that done. So I was I was pretty fortunate to have that opportunity to play with them because yeah. we got beat by them for a long time. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's annoying, eh? Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Sharkies for a little bit, obviously, a bit of origin chat there. Um, when I when I like I just associate my time with the Sharkies when I used to play against you guys, and you guys were kind of more so like the gritty side. Yeah. So like we'll score two. two uh, if we're winning by eight, let them let get a try so we can get back into this little arm wrestle. When you had guys like this, now you're into this sort of new phase where sometimes you can put 40 on a team when sometimes you could let 30 roll past you. What's the biggest transition you've seen over this? Well, you've obviously been there for a long time, but let's just go off your premiership winning year and the year you're at right now because I think you're in the premiership window now. It's, oh, for me, it's just the coaching styles, really. Like Fitzy has um, his philosophy and his, his way he views the game and what he coaches us. Every day, like we talk about, you know, we like our staff are pretty cool, man. So we've got Fitzy and Steve Price, who was a part of the 2016 team, do the D. And then we have, you know, Josh Hanna, who takes the uh, attack with Daniel Holdsworth, DJ. Yeah, so they're like, there too. Yeah, they're, oh, sick. Mate, it's a cool crew, man. They're, like, you could all have, you can have a beer for those yeah, boys. They're, too, they're right? all good, but they're, mm. they're just precise in what they want. They, they know what they need in the game. And it's just our style is completely different to back then. Back then, we we sort of had, were led by Gauza and Louie and um, Mickey Ennis, this experienced team. Yeah, Townsend and, just, and Robson, who are kind of yeah, more like steady. Yeah, just steady out. Yeah. And we're just like, we'll, we'll, just through experience and through grit and just, you know, wanting to get into the fight, we, we'd we um, score. And like, we that's how we get our results. And not saying we didn't have classy players, because we had Benny Barber at the back and we had, um, you know, Val was coming through and Birdie and, and Ricky and Sasai Fecky were, were killing it as well. Mm. But we just were more dominated by that hard edge. Old, no, older experienced team where now we're driven by these young guys who are just you know fearless they're fearless in the way they play and now they want to prepare to attack on the weekends and um, our biggest thing for us is that consistency in, in the defense like if we can get a defense right um, and and put us put ourselves up into that top tier of defensive teams like 
we'll find some points with our style because it, it's a hard style. It's a hard it's, style to play, but when you when we get it right, it's, oh, it's so, hard to defend. Oh, it's so pretty. Eh? Like I don't like. Obviously, you see you guys just walking tries over, and probably the only team I really see do that is like Rabbitohs, and that's when they've been in a system for so long. But it's so pretty to watch, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's it was funny because for a while, for a long time after the Premiership. We were trying to play the same style that we used to through just those years. Just didn't have the same troops. And we just didn't have the same troops, and it was just different styles of players. And it really took that fresh start from Fitzy to come across, and you know, really, it was almost just tear the page out and start again because it, everyone who was involved previous Fitzy was had come through Flano's Shane Flanagan system, so they were all trying to implement the same system, whether it be training week, um, game plan, and it was just a different. It was a completely different team. Like we had. You know, at the time of when we won in 2016, we had three guys with over 300 games, and you know we still had like Matty Pryor and Fafita who were like 150 gamers. I might have been, you know, 180 at that stage. So it was just the week was always about building, building, get your prep done. But then come game day, it's on. Like, it, and mm. you just knew everyone was going to show up and play well and or just do their job. And we tried to sort of adopt that through. We just didn't really change, it and we were so inconsistent because we just probably lacked a lot in our prep. They yeah. let us down on the weekend where Fitzy, he came over <laughs> and he shaped us and like, you know, not to embarrass like Ronnie or the young guys coming through there and just coming into the best parts of their careers. Mm. And a lot of them are only 23, 24. And as someone who's, you know, going to be finishing up soon, I just, mate, the club's in a great spot with our staff and the, the core of the young guys coming through. And for someone who's put so much time and years into the club, you know, I'm so happy with where it's at and I'm excited for what's in store for the next you know, however long. Mm. What, what's next for you? Do you, do you know what you're doing? I don't, now I don't know. Don't know, yeah, I don't know. There's a few balls up in there. I can obviously, I can finish. Yeah. Um, if I do finish, hopefully I stay away, like stay around the club. Um, there's still. Are you going to coach? You, you, I've always thought you'd be a coach. Well, I've been doing a little <laughs> bit. Of like a I've been doing yeah, a, always try and tell him. <laughs> 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 I've been doing a bit with the pathways already. Yeah. Um, and I just started working with the women's team, the NRLW, the W. They've only just started their pre-season, so they're only doing real basic stuff. I've got the, the stuff in the media. I'm signed with Triple M at the moment and yeah. I do a bit of Fox. Um, work with Fox and Nine freelance. And then I think, well, then options are still to play if, I, if I'm feeling good at the end of the year. Still and got that fire in your belly? I still love it, eh? Like coming to training, <laughs> but it's a, um, because of the, the where the squad is at and the staff is at, it's just a real easy place to come, man, and mm. work and, and just do your job. It's always fun and, um, you know, I, I can't see myself leaving Cronulla. Like, my kids are settled there. There's a still a little bit of maybe going overseas. You know, obviously my partner's French Canadian, so the can you speak French now? A little bit. I'm little getting bit. better. I'm getting better. Um, so there's still a little bit of a a pull to maybe spend some time in France. Mm. Um, or then if I do finish, and we're okay, like there's an op there's an option to move to Canada for a bit as well. So I'm. Um, Got some good options. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I'm juggling, I'm juggling yeah, a few yeah. balls at the moment. Oh, sick. I'm sure you'll figure it out anyway. Um, your coach, uh, Fitzgibbon, obviously, like, I think it's important when you come into a team, and especially when you're young, and it's a good side and a winning side like he spoke of, but what's some of the greatest lessons you've learned from Fitzy so far? Oh, you know, obviously, what Wedo said, like, we lost a couple of our experienced players after the grand final years, and I didn't debut till 2019, so that's like three years you know, from that. Yeah. And then you know, it's come into a side with so many, ex so much experience still. You know, we still had Gauza, uh, Wado, Prescat was there around there, and uh, Moisa, you know, all those boys there that kind of led the way for us. Um, and I remember, like, always remember vividly, like, we always get on the beers, always try and go and drink with the older boys and you listen to their stories and that, like, <laughs> yeah. just, just to get a bit, bit of a laugh. And um, now one thing that probably, like, stuck with me during those hard times was, like, you know, like I said, you know, Wado is one of those guys that he talks and you listen. Um, and... He's just been that core leader for us for so long, especially us young dudes. And you know, when the club was kind of going through all that um, the turnover of, of coaching staff and all that jazz, I think the only person that kind of really hold, held us together was probably Wado. Yeah. And he's probably the only reason why boys stayed. Um, and during this time, you know, during that whole time, Wado always used to be like, don't worry, boys, you know, we'll see better days. And, and when the whole Bomber thing happened, when Bomber got fired, you know, that was probably someone I loved. Like John Morris was like, you know, that person that held me in, in first grade. And yeah. to see that kind of thing happen kind of put me off a bit. And then you know, Wade was always the one that made sure that boys don't stress, don't worry. It's all going to be, it's going to be all good. I promise you, I promise you. And 
to come out on the other end, obviously we still haven't done anything, you know. We haven't won a premiership, we haven't done anything yet, so there's still more to be done. But it's just nice to see where to kind of sit back now and, and just you know, kind of chaperone us in, in a different way. And um, you know, we'll, I'll come in as a 19 year old, I'm 23, turning 24 this year, and Wade has watched me my whole career so far and, mm. and all those older boys. So it's nice to be able to let them sit back and have a laugh at our, our stories and, <laughs> and have a giggle about us. Yeah, and, just let and you learn. Hey, yeah, let we'll us be learn. That's not going on no heaps. Like, <laughs> you know, Fitzy is just one of those guys that, um, you know, the way he played his career, you know, he's just tough and, and just Was one of the- Is he ever onside? <laughs> no, he's, he's always offside. <laughs> <a> big long <laughs> thing, eh? Yeah, like, you know, he, and the way he's kind of teaching us, and I still, you know, like, like what I said, we're still trying to find that consistent footy. Like we want to play pretty, we want to play that nice brand of footy, but- it's hard to get that balance exactly, right. Exactly, yeah. Then that's, the, that's what we're getting wrong at the moment is that, that balance of, fuck man, sometimes you got to bend your back and yeah. wingers don't bend their backs. So I just sit there and like, <laughs> my ones catch the high balls, I guess. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, all those little things, I think. And, and Fitzy is trying to get it out of us to make sure that, you know, we, we come and balance that right. right? Yeah. And yeah, I'm just enjoying my footy at the moment, enjoying the club environment. Like what they say, man, our staff, like, we it definitely could, we, helps, bro. Yeah, yeah, we want to invite them to have beers with us. That's yeah, how funny, yeah. like, that's how good they are. Like, we yeah. want to invite all of them, including our coach. You know, you go to other clubs, uh, hear stories about them not even wanting a bar with their coaching staff. And But whereas our group is like, if we have, like, a team drink up, we want them to be a part of that. Mm. And I think that's important. And even our development players, bro, we, we get everyone involved at, at our club. Like, when our rule is, like, you come in, you're just one of us straight away. Like, it's, yeah, that's cool. it's kind of a, none of this hierarchy. Obviously, you have your hierarchy at the back of your head like you know you got the older boys and that but Wado like he'll talk to anyone he doesn't care like Moyes will talk to anyone and they'll reach out to anyone so I think we've got a good crop of um, boys around our club um I want to watch you play like to get in a little, little <laughs> battle <laughs> I love it personally <laughs> I love it <laughs> you, know, you let him answer first and I'll, <laughs> tell you, I'll tell you a funny story I'll tell you a funny story um, I'll ask you a question do you do that to get yourself motivated or is it a point where like someone does something to you and you just can't help it almost Cody Walker-esque it's, yeah, it's almost I was like sometimes I just I just want to do it like to test someone like to see I know everyone likes like, this guy's a freaking dick like you know what I mean like, I, I don't mind it yeah, like, yeah. I, no, I, I see it as my theory is if I'm versing someone why should I like them you know, for 80 minutes, right? Like, whether it's my, my good mate, my best mate, or whoever it is, whatever game it is, whether it's a video game, whether it's a, a rugby game, whatever, I just see it as for 80 minutes, I hate you with my life. Like, I hate your guts, and I'll do anything for my 17 boys and my team. <laughs> and that's all I care about. Like, I, it doesn't, like, nothing else matters more than my teammates, right? But does this come from gaming? Like, from. Nah, oh, it probably does, but <laughs> what gets my old brothers and them? And I was younger, <laughs> freaking. But I, and, and I, take things like personal and I probably take it too personal sometimes yeah. and, I, and I do cross that line at points of time and where's the line I don't know sometimes <laughs> I, the line is when I'm getting abused the line <laughs> <laughs> I put it in too hard that, that night and, and or when I'm trying to walk out of Balmore and I'm almost on my deathbeds but um <laughs> but yeah no, like I you know, I play my game like that and I, it's it's a bit of to motivate myself, but also to play this mental game. Like I want to see if you've arrived. I want to see if you you came to play. And mm. um, no, it's a it's one of those things you just go at each other. And now if someone wants to do it back to me, I, I love it. Like I'm not going to sit there and cry about it or complain about it. Like yeah. I'm like, oh, you just try not to make eye contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like it's, you know, one of those things <laughs> you just want to like get into it, stuck into it. Like me, Jared, like Jared played the Roosters. And, yeah. Um, and like we, were, no, we obviously went on camp together, and he's like, "Run here, you little, you know, Jared, get in the Yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, come on, <laughs> you know, I love that confrontation." Like, yeah, and it's it's part of who I am, I think. And as long as that stuck stays on the field, and I'm a dick on the field, and whatever on the field, that's all right. But as soon as I cross the white line, back in, you know, I'm a, I'm a man first. I'm a you know, partner to my, my missus, and yeah. I'm a good son for my mother, and. And I'm a good man in my community, so. I hate, I hate, I hate when um, like I, I know fans and they want way more access, but like it's almost the old, like what happens on the field yeah, yeah, stays well, that's on a, the it, field. Like, that's well, we come through that way. It's still like that to me. Like you'd you know, have a spray. Who you educator. are as a person is not necessarily who you are as a player. Like once, like Mickey Ennis is a perfect example. Right, right? Everyone hated him on the field. Everyone hated eh? him on the field, right? But like he. he he doesn't drink off the field. He's mate. He's the best dad. He's got you know, all his children. He's quiet. He's humble off the field. So, um, and I remember when I first met him, I, I was so shocked because I had um, like this perception of him or what <laughs> I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be old school knockabout, see you at the pub after training sort of guy because that's like he come through the Newcastle system. And 
he was like he's a teetotaler. Like, it's completely different. But then when he crosses that line, the whistle's on, the competition comes out. You know, it changes it changes people. And to be fair, if you didn't have that sense of competition in you as a, as an athlete, you wouldn't make it anyway. Like mm. you wouldn't have that fire to do it. Some it comes out in different ways in in different people, um, and you can see it a lot. But you need to have that ultimate competitive spirit to be an athlete. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful because at some stage in a game of rugby league or in, in any game like it's it's either it's, it's me or you right and it's yeah. like if you want to win it's it's you got to pick yourself so i'll tell you a funny story about him when he first came in like he's always chirping at training the two he's got that in him and it's good because he brings the energy he's a lot of you know what it's like middle of winter tuesday everyone's you know mid-year everyone's a bit banged up and then mm. you're just searching for something and like he's one of our he's one of our guys and he's uh, one of our emotional guys who really drives the sessions and and sometimes he does slip over to the. <laughs> <laughs> all right, maybe just ease up on his chirpy yeah, ass. Yeah. Yeah. So what, in, in, in his first year or second year of playing the Dragons at Cogra, I don't know who he's into. He's put, or maybe the young half. He's a young half. He's like yeah. got into him after a tackle, and then we have ran down the field and he's, we scored a try. And he's given him another chirp on the way through, and then Tyson Frizzell like comes up <laughs> and Frizz is like one of the best players. No, ever. Is good, yeah. And I, I, he play, I played with him at the Sharks and. Um, origin and stuff and then i grabbed twice yeah man that's all right just leave me just young he goes you, you better tell him to shut up man he's, he's going too far i said don't worry man i train with him every day there's been a couple of times where i said everyone it's enough <laughs> so but it's it's good he's a competitor um he's, he's good for us like we love that energy um and sometimes that's what it takes man mm. funny thing bro we did this um when shawnee was at our club and he used to do this like double drop play yeah and i was on i was playing on the right edge at that time and waiter was still on the left edge and um we did this double drop and waiter is like not he's not a test match he's just like fuck boys just get me to saturday and you know <laughs> yeah. so, build, like, build up like, I'm, fucking, I'm already at saturday <laughs> by then and, and so we do this like double drop play and, and i go straight through like the whole way, like um, Moise and Waiter was, but Waiter is just chilling. And I go straight through. I'm carrying on, grade, <laughs> grade three, carry on. And he turns around. And I heard, I heard, all I hear is, "Oh, you better bring that on fucking Saturday." Then I was like, <laughs> I was, like, oh, my. So I was like "Better bring that play out on Saturday." It's like I better be, a, I better have a good game this week because I think Waiter's gonna be like, "You're gonna train like Tarzan and play like Jane." Yeah. <laughs> What's it like? And obviously, you've had some moments where you've dropped the ball over yep. the line. Um, who who palmed you a couple of weeks ago? Oh, Uncle flush. Fowdy, bro. Maybe yeah, the floor. yeah. Um, obviously, like, how do you bounce back from that? You just it just doesn't bother you. Oh, like you know, I get at training, bro, and I'll trip. And like, wait, is this is wait is like see, this doesn't want me by. He's been a pillar for us, so he's he's always saying, if you're gonna live that life, you fucking like you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So yeah, yeah. If you're gonna be able to give people shit when you do things to them, you better be able to take it if someone's gonna do. So when I got offended, when I put my hand out, like first of all, you know, I'm disappointed, obviously that. Couldn't get right, but fuck you, you go on with life. Like I'm gonna go home, play my game, enjoy myself. Like <laughs> uh, it doesn't yeah. bother. Like I bother. Like, I don't want to do it again. Like I'm not saying I don't care. Like it's not the point. I don't care. Fuck it. Like it doesn't mm. mean anything. It's it's like all right. Like address it there, finish it there, and just make that like kind of the last time, and then go home, relax, yeah. and home's home, works work kind of thing. So that's that's like pretty like like a mature mentality eh? because yeah. i remember like we were younger like it was kind of everything was everything you know what i mean like all done stuff together we would drive out stay at waiter's yeah. house for like the weekend and <laughs> always just doing shit together there's that separation part now and like we've been around you've been around a lot longer than i have in the football game but is it weird just seeing like how professional young fella obviously it's a great thing yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, you know what i'm saying it's, yeah, it's changed it has changed a lot obviously but it's funny, like every generation's going to say it's changed. Right? I remember when we first came in, it was like it's changed a lot from then too. From the <laughs> yeah. older guys. Like, I think for us, like we were only at the start of social media. Like, I know Facebook and that was around, but we were only just sort of starting through social media. So, mm. and we were still at the, we still had the ability, you know, to almost you didn't have to leave. You could leave your phone at home almost when we were like 22, 23. You didn't really necessarily need to take your phone out. Like mm. we'd get to the pub and we'd have our time, and we would have that separation, even though we all say to different clubs you know that time spent with each other was our separation and was sort of our way to recalibrate and so okay but maybe i was feeling bad about yesterday's game but hang on a minute i'm hanging out with my five guys from you know three other different teams and it's all <laughs> it's all good like it's all yeah. good and then you so then you go home you sleep that night you wake up in the morning oh all well, yeah, things are good let's go like new week yeah but it's harder for the young boys especially if they're on their phone all the time social media to, to get away from it because you're always it's always there right and with all the content that's coming out, whether it's Twitter or Instagram or 
you know, f- you know, Foxy's reporting, Nines reporting, you got yourself talking stuff. Like, guys, I follow who are my friends are even talking about footy now. You need to have that separation. Um, and you need to have that ability to, like, of course you're going to feel, like, when you don't play well, you're going to feel, like, shit. And, you know, like, you need to look at the game. Like, it's always been like that. No, mm. one's, a, no one's a harsh criti- critic on yourself than you are. Mm. Like, you know when you've had a bad game and you know you'll – you're waiting for that session on that video session on Monday. <laughs> you probably had a couple of looks at it. <laughs> yeah. You've had a couple of looks at it on your own. But at some point, there needs to be a cutoff where you go, okay, that's gone because it's on again this week. Like, it's on again this week. It's on again the next week. Yeah. It's on again the next week. And then if you can't have that separation, and it, the same thing when you win too, you need to have that separation. That win's gone. Like mm. It doesn't matter. No one cares. It's over. How, it's long, how long can you celebrate it for? Uh, Just the night or? I like, Day off next day. Day off yeah, next day. Like, I think for me, we normally we do recovery the next day. So whether it's swim and a stretch and then some video and then into a day off. So you have that sort of that Arvo into mm. that next day. That's when you sort of either celebrate it. Like that Arvo is when you celebrate or get over it. That next day for me now is family time or, or doing what mm-hmm. I like need to do or the young boys is sort of, that's your, that's your actual day off where you don't really need to worry about next week prep. And mm. you don't need to worry about what's happened because it's it's gone. But then on Tuesday morning, it's on, like, it's on again. Like yeah, that's probably one thing <coughs> I struggled with. Like early early in my career was like the boys knew what to do, right? And I was just always here, like I was, <laughs> and I was just redlining all the time. And, like, <laughs> I don't know, like wouldn't why have a break? And it probably like I would get to like halfway through the year, and I was just mentally drained. Like I was like, man, how do you, how do you guys? Yeah, you can't be up all the time, years or Ten years, you know, and I. I was just redlining the whole time. But then as I've gotten like kind of old and just learning off the older boys and how they go about their days and, and how to manage it, I kinda, I'm kind of getting better. Like I know, like, all right, flush that. It's a new week. Let's go again. And mm. that's probably one thing that transition period and is what I really struggled with, like redlining that game and then having to try and get up again for the next game. So I think now that now I'm getting a bit older, um, yeah, well, it, take, it takes time. Like, it takes time for everyone. Like, mm. you, and you can be told so many times, like, this is how you do it, or this is what you need to do, or try and do this. But you need to live it and do yeah. it yourself. Like, that's that old saying. Like, you're not a first grader until you've played 100 games mm. because you have all those mm-hmm. lessons that you need to learn to, to what it takes to be consistent. Because it's a hard sport, man. Like, it's a hard game. Everyone, you know, you, you might be a good player, but you're coming up against good players every yeah. week, good teams every week. So, yeah as soon as you can sort of give yourself the best op- opportunity to you know be consistent and to prep well like you give yourself the best opportunity as a team to play well on the weekend you said josh Hannay <coughs> is great at identifying current trends what's what's the what's what's changed from 10 years ago to now like what's the big ones for you my one for me the the biggest one would be um like my, the momentum in the game you've always been able to feel the momentum in the game when you're, you're playing against it or playing with it you can mm. feel it but the, the swings now are, are so large because of how how much faster the game's got with the six again and the rule changes. I mean, there's less set start, there's more ball in play. So when you're against it, like if you haven't got the momentum, you can like it, you can feel it even more now. That's why we can see like team, the Warriors games. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. feel it. Like it, it's never been like as big, and, and it's a factor in all sports, you know. Ours has never been a different, and you could sort of feel it, but you could feel like periods of the game where it's hanging in the balance. Mm. I feel like those periods are less now in our game because the momentum's either with you or against you. And let's try and, as a team, let's try to, like when you don't have momentum, trying to fight that, fight for it back. How do you or, fight for it back? Well, it's either your system as a team, like your belief as a team, like just staying in the staying in the fight when you don't have it or it comes up to your individual players, like you see a, a player will come up with a good kick or a big run or make a break or a combination. Um, they'll make a, 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 a break or whatever, or a big, a big shot to force an error. Mm. Like it's an individual play, but like like I said, you would know yourself when you were you know, half, you could always feel when you had the momentum, like you just oh, could feel nice, it was easy. It? Yeah. And you could feel it when it changed and you didn't have it. Now those swings are even bigger. Yeah, like it's, you can feel those even more. So, do you reckon they like the top coaches are starting to time those little swings and like, you know, a lot of people get into detail of like, oh, we've got momentum, like, of based off fucking current trends, it roughly lasts about five or six sets or something along those lines, or is that is that just getting too no, detailed? I think, yeah, I think that there would be coaches that explain that in, in their way and they would understand it, but ultimately it comes down to the team, right? The coach isn't out there with you 
on the field when the when the game's happening. So yeah. you need to recognise it as a team. You know, when you don't have momentum, and it's okay. Well, let's just roll the sleeves up here and get through this tough period. Chiz does it well, eh? He, he does it well. well eh? He does it well. Be under the pump, boom, forty well, that's, why, that's why. Um, <laughs> that's why I like those. It's hard to replace an older, experienced half with such a good kicking game because they can feel it, right? They can feel when it's like we we haven't got momentum here, so mm. they'll actually pull out of the sets. Boys, just give me three or four tough hit ups, and I'll kick you into a spotty, or I'll, I'll I'll have a crack at a forty twenty. They can feel it, mm. and it might take them three sets to finally get that opportunity in the right spot of the field when they can have a shot at the forty twenty. But yeah, and Teddy's still in the pocket, yeah, organising the DA, and just swings yeah, around. Bang! Guarantee you they've been thinking of it for the last mm. you know couple of sets because they can feel like oh we're not getting easy meters here, or we you know our fullbacks not catching the ball on the full. See, that's another way that I gauge for them. Like if your fullback catches on the on, on the, the full, full brings it back like the good the experience on. halves they'd be no right we're on front footy get me to a point in two plays and we'll have a shot at something but yeah like, like you said those that's those old experienced halves understand it um so when, when i think back in the day where like if we had good ball we could throw like two decent shots like that'd be kind of class as like a good set you haven't really wasted your set i watch you guys play you guys can go like yeah like that i think that's a big trend that's changed a lot too and obviously you need personnel in there and you're 761 yeah pretty i think elite. With, the, with the fatigue and that that's come into the game and, and the momentum um it's not so much about you know it's actually allowed the footy players to come back into the game about those guys that just see space count numbers and play like before when it was less fatigue so much structure Wrestle, in defense, and yeah. even so much structure in defense everything was really structured because you need to you know all these set plays to try and pull teams apart because they were set defensive lines were set there wasn't as much fatigue now sometimes it's a it's just a simple pass 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 it's strip, <laughs> yeah. strip everyone to win because you're out on your feet because the momentum's been going for so long um so i feel like it's allowed the guys like we have we have nico and moisa right and even will k they're not really technical ball ball players are they they're, they're over the ad line they're fast they're challenging with their run yeah and because they challenge with their run and their speed over the ad line creates opportunity for the outside so mm. that's our that's our style and it's because our style like our guys are those style of players like if we had adam reynolds at halfback you know our style would change just to yeah, our players so okay, yeah. um, fuck you got some strike out on the edge too obviously my, probably my favorite winging combination in the comp yeah. like i had leota and fisher like these are my favorite props in the comp like very similar, eh? Like safe, strong carry, good under the height ball. Um, yeah, and obviously you got some guys inside you too, and Ramian and Sif. Sure, be Sif. Nah, <laughs> What's he like, bro? What's he like? It's funny, man. Um, he's probably like our particular. Like, yeah, he's always he's like our bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, can he we, fight? Can he can he? fight, man. Oh, I, I don't want to test him either. <laughs> but he's um, yeah, he's like a journeyman. You know what I mean? Like he's been through it all. He's seen probably some shit that no one else has, and uh, he's probably. He's gone the track of the bad way and, and found out what it's like to, to go down that track. So What's he done? Oh, no, nah, just like obviously he stuffed up at training, got fired, oh, okay. uh, got sacked from South. Yeah. Then went down that pathway and obviously, you know, how it, you know, everyday living, learning what it was like to get a job again. Because he came straight out of high school into the NRL system and had all this money, right? So, and this is a kid that didn't know what to do with any of that. And so he lost his way, then obviously come back. And no, I think he's matured now. He's got kids now, so there's not many guys that go the other way. Like they usually nah. start at center and, and yeah. roll in. Yeah. He's gone the other way around. That's the dream. Exactly. He just yeah, he <laughs> went the hard way and actually found out you know what it took again. And no, nah, it's just he's, he's one of those players, man. That he's funny. See if I train like we do heaps of like <laughs> Fitzy loves jujitsu like so we do heaps of grappling. He's in like. there too, hasn't he? he? He's, in there. he's, yeah. he's yeah. good. You flip um, him. Nah. <laughs> um, but Sif, so Sif, talk about like cruiser. But he, he he likes to just do what he needs to do in that sort of area but if someone goes hard at him he goes, oh, then like, <laughs> <laughs> if you want to tone it up let's go up and then he, he's so strong in that in that room oh for sure yeah um, he's probably te- uh, yeah, lucky yeah. he's not test match well, we, all, all the boys just say oh thank thank god he's not <laughs> yeah he's just not pat him on the back keep him yeah, happy yeah. keep him happy oh, you're, 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 you're feeling good. Yeah, all good yeah um played with a guy called the g train you got a guy there now Dale Fanukin. what's the difference in leadership type and what's the similarities in leadership type? Because they're both a bit tapped, eh? Yeah. Well, G- Gauza's all right. Gauza was like, we talk about, um, like, Dale is like full tilt all the time. Mm. Like he's That's all, red line. It's red light all red the time. Line. Like, life, Monday, he's, don't care how sorry he is, no, rocks no, no. up. Rehab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, red line. Recovery re- yeah, red he, line. He, he's on, like, as soon as, like, 
He walks through the gates, it's on. He's yeah. full tilt. Ken McInnes is the same. They're, actually, he's got a little bit zen this year. Yeah, but Cam, Cam walks to training. Yeah. I don't know how he walks to training and <laughs> Mission walks with his headphones on. I said, bro, yeah, the car, man. So he's... Uh, <laughs> how far is his walk? <laughs> like he's, 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 he he tries to say it's yeah, a 10-minute nah, walk. I said, season, nah. uh, yeah, if you're running, mate. Um, so Dale's full tilt all the time. That's just how he's wired. His program, like, as soon as he's in, he's on. Mm. Like, he's warming up in the gym before anyone. He's got his routine. He stri- gets strapped up. He's got all this, you know, he, he's, he knows what works for him. It's a process. He goes through that process every day at 100 miles an hour. But Gowser was more, certainly, you know, he was a bit more redline when he was younger, when I first started with him. But he, he sort of grew into that leadership role. The, the more he... He got like the, to the back end of his career. He was mm. he calmed down a bit, and it wasn't a hundred miles an hour. But he was more, he was fine to just float around. But a bit like Sifa, like, as soon as someone challenged him, it's he takes right. that personal. Like everything's personal. If it's a one-on-one battle, like he would still try and race Val and Benny Barber <laughs> over ten meters like, at the back end of his career because <laughs> because they call him out, and he yeah. would go a hundred percent or try and like, Give it. cheat or like get them off the side or whatever. Like just he's so competitive. <laughs> yeah, and you see it in his boxing matches like mm. even the back end like when you know you know he slowed down half a step he just refuses like he has just that inner thing he just refuses to give up or refuses to let someone put it over him <laughs> even though he just toughs it out to the end right yeah. and that was gals he never said too much like he always spoke like spoke about the game he obviously played a while but it was more just follow it, like do as i do like don't worry about what i'm saying just follow me yeah and catch this offload yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Ooh. Like his toughness just showing through. Like there was no one. He's getting a dressing chair, and you look around, and he's lacing his boots up. You know, well, he's in, he's yeah. on for the he's on for the fight here for the whole time. So. Yeah. And and Dale has that about him too. Don't get me wrong. He plays the game um, hard and tough. He probably sport. He probably speaks a little bit more than Gow did. Yeah. Oh really? Um, yeah. yeah. He, he come from that Melbourne system. Like probably you know really well coached by Craig and understands. Um, like the tricks around the footy field. Yeah, he he speaks and he helps the young guys out uh, in those areas with some <laughs> bumpers every week. <laughs> you um, got the bumpers or doom, that dude. And Gauz was more just yeah, he just was tough, man. Just oh, we so would tough. um, have <laughs> when like our coach would give us this like a ninety when I paid off him, He'd give <laughs> us this massive rundown about the opposition and blah 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 blah. And then, like, just before we go out, he'll get us in the heart. He goes, F all that. Just go out, tackle hard, run hard. And then just <laughs> run off and then we'll just follow through. All right, like, that must be the recipe then. And I think, like, to, to be fair, it's a good way to, um, to think, like, because for me as a player, and we know, like, you can do all the game planning you mm-hmm. want, right? And the, the prep on the opposition and, and, and game plan yourself. And that all you need all that detail, right? You need all that detail. You need it in the back of your head so you can execute on the field. But but unless you get the basics of our game right at the start, mm. unless you're running hard mm-hmm. and you're tackling hard, you're winning the collision, you're losing the collision. Throw all the details out 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 the window because it's not going to work. Mm. Like you need to give the game the respect that <coughs> um, it's deserved for however long it's been around, and you need to get the, your physical commitment in the right place. Otherwise, you put all the trick shots. You know, keep in the back pocket because they're not going to come out. <laughs> right, which was what Gals, yeah. That was Gals. That was Gals. Game, that was Gals. Yeah. And then if you put your energy and your commitment in the right spot and, and you play the game the right way, well, then the details come out. You go, okay, mm. I know they set three down that short side if we send a back row in, so you tip your fullback up. Or yeah. I know if we get to this position, you know, the fullback's going to plug, so there might be a op- like, chance to swing the other side. So the detail only comes out if you give yourself the right opportunity. And the way you give yourself the opportunity is to respect the game. and and you know the physical commitment is where mm. it starts. He would sure. run for like 200 meters, and he's almost 40. Oh, yeah, no he'd come like just get out there, run for 200 meters, come back on the bench, and just be like, "Oh, work's done today." Yeah, like I was just like, look at him. What the hell, you're yeah. a maniac. He's like, got that. Something's tapped in his ear. Yeah. He's just we well, see it in the fights. Like <coughs> obviously, um, he was like, what do you say? Polarized people. Yeah. Polarized people, right? You either loved him if you were a Sharkies fan. You know, you hated him if you were a Queenslander. Probably if you didn't like like any other team, you were neutral. You didn't really like him because yeah. that persona. But by the end of his boxing, like oh. whether you liked him or not, even boxers, gave him I think respect, everyone man. just goes, yeah. "Man, you got to give him the man the yeah. respect he deserves." Like yeah. he's just his will and his determination and just toughness. It's just like is that is that pay packet legit? That he you know he said I've made like twenty three million and I think that's it, like the gross that they uh, they made all up. Like oh okay the revenue. But uh, he did well out of it. Like he, he earned more 
Oh, he would earn. You boys are off the double the limit boys, aren't you? Is that is that number close? Uh, it's the rev. Yeah, yeah, it's the rev, eh? Yeah. No, but he would like he would he would he would probably. Oh, I don't want to say triple. I would say double, leaning towards triple with what he earned. Fighting. Playing footy. His whole playing career. Oh wow. Well. Like he's, he's smart. He's tight yeah, he's as so of his pockets. Smart with his money. Smart with his <laughs> yeah. money. He tight owns half of man. Oh, does he? Yeah. Yeah. Good He'd on him. Like, he doesn't want to say it. You I don't, want, I don't, I don't want to speak out of school. <laughs> <laughs> you won't say that. He'll yeah. just be like, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, like, I know like, a couple of his investments and that, and I won't speak out of school because he's one of my good mates. But he's, yeah. I'm talking like almost generational stuff for his kids. Oh, kids, good on so him. He's that's done yeah. well. Yeah, that's very smart. Um, what stops you boys from winning a comp this year? Hopefully nothing. <laughs> oh, we can can you feel it? Can we, you, like, when oh, you're a... Mate, we're building the right... Like, it's, for sure, we're going into a good period. That's why I said like before earlier, like we're, I'm excited for not just this year, but you know the next five years. Like if we, if the club gets it right, which they're doing, they obviously have Fitzy at the top there, looking after everything. Who's experienced, he understands the game. We've got a good group of young guys who are just coming into their their best. Mm. Um, it's exciting for for someone like me who's, who's given a lot of time to the club to to see how good a shape it's in. For, for this year, you know, there's no doubt we need to fix up. Our defence, you know, at times when we've been under pressure, we've leaked too many easy tries and you just can't do that. Like, we talk about the momentum swings. Like, you can not have the momentum, but somehow you're going to find a way to stop tries mm. because that's when you do get the the ball and the momentum go your way, you know, that's your opportunity to find tries. So we've let ourselves down, um, you know, in a few games. You know, the Warriors, the second half. Dolphins up at Magic Round. That's, that's the worst feeling when someone's going to, like, you can feel someone chopping you down. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a lonely place around the field. Like, yeah. you, just, you can say whatever you want yeah, to, yeah, eh, but you can feel place. it. You can you feel, feel it. it like that, uh, the snowball, you're just on your heels and you just go, you feel like, you're, is it like 13 on one here? Uh, <laughs> but we're, 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 we're trending. Like, we're only halfway through this year. What do we got? Like, we're not even halfway, you know, mm. are we? I think we still have yeah, probably yeah. a couple of weeks off being halfway. So I, th I think we You want to time it too, don't you? I think we give ourselves a pass for where we are. Yeah. Uh, and that's even, you know, even with those games we let ourselves go. Like, we were really disappointed with Magic Round. Like, that was just, that sort of didn't see that coming. So yeah. So it was sort of a really, really uh, tough, you know, bit of pill to swallow. And then the Warriors game hurt us too. Like, Will Cruz and it's probably the best footy you've played in ages that first half. And mm. then they came home and they just, yeah, they just outcompeted us really in that second half. So that was a hard one. Yeah. But you know, even those two performances, I think we're going okay. Yeah, but if we want to be serious at the end of the year, like when it counts, we we, we still need some improvement, particularly mm. defence. Got time, bro. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You do you have a mindset coach? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I work with a guy, um, how'd Simon. You, how'd you get into that? I was just like, my manager and my mum, like they were just like, oh, what do you think about you know talking to a mindset coach kind of thing and. I just have a look at it, see how it goes. And so we just sat, organized the meeting. I just sat in it. I didn't really know what to expect. Just sat down and just said, oh, you know, it could go good or it can go bad. You know, what's the worst that could happen? It's worth a try. And I did that, sat down with him, and I really enjoyed it. I obviously like talking to people. I like communicating. And, and I'm not one that's shy of expressing my feelings of how I feel. And, and if I'm feeling sad, I'll tell people I'm sad. If I'm feeling happy, I'll tell people I'm happy. I'm, so when I, when obviously when the opportunity came up and um, presented itself, I just took it with two hands and just thought, you know, what, why not get something out of it? And, um, and I played some of my best footy so far, you know, while while having them. And what's um, what's a couple of the things that you've learned from that? Redlining myself all the time, <laughs> um, and just like my mindset and and making errors. Like I debuted. I went dog shit. That was hard. That was, that was a hard game. I still bro. like. I'm still pissed off at myself about it. Like <laughs> Anthony Milford kicked bad the whole year and then just had a beauty blindo against me. Um, but to be fair too, you, he was 80th man. Like, yeah, oh, like, like, hadn't prepped him the before. last minute. So he never was, played wing. Yeah, he's just, prepped. Yeah, and so he gets stuck in like. Oh, you'd never played wing. Never played wing. I was always a centre fullback. Yeah, played in a middle bit. But yeah, like I. So then, oh no, my debut was rubbish, and then I played for Salmore my, in that 19 year rubbish. <laughs> and so like I was starting to think I was the problem in oh, all yeah. these teams and Duffy yeah. beat, up that Duffy short, beat eh? me down the short side <laughs> rubbish so I, I had these like just these mind things in my thing that thinking like when one thing went wrong and I just compounded it and I just thought ah, like what's, what is this like what's going on is it my mindset going into these games so I wanted to ice that out and, and when I got the chance I spoke to him I was just open with him I said 
I'm starting to think I'm the problem in these big games, like in these games that are important to me, my milestone stone games. And yeah. so we spoke about it and he's just like, man, if you make an error, your mindset shouldn't waver. Your mindset is dominate every time. Like whether something's wrong or right, you've got that personality that you want to dominate. Like, and I, I am that person that I just want to dominate in anything I do, whether it's, like I said, gaming or anything like that. And so mm. he just tapped into that and, and my mentality and um, probably a lot of gratitude stuff as well. And like I said, I come from nothing and I get given all these things and I start, I start to forget who I am or you know, where, you know, what I've got given and the opportunity I've been given. And so tapping back into gratitude was a massive thing for me. Yeah, um, um, I just watched an interview of yep. you and growing up in garages. That yeah, yeah, crazy, yeah, 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 so like Fuck. That, that type of thing. And I don't know, there's probably kids out there that have done that in, the, in, in our already and just haven't spoken about it yet, but mm. I'm, I'm comfortable enough to say it, obviously. And yeah, just things like that, you know, I, I wanted to practice my uh, like practice gratitude and and I text. I remember my first session after it. I text my mom and said, "Hey, mom, like I'm I'm really grateful for you. Thank you so much for everything, and I love you." And that's you no know, those little things like that. Yep. Um And so now, if something does go wrong, uh, like I said, I like drop a ball or, you know, at the halfway period kind of thing. I went down to the cafe on Monday and I just wrote out my gratitude. Wrote out you know how my year's been so far, and I was pretty honest. And I paper doesn't judge you, so I just went hard on myself and. Like way they said, you're your own toughest critic, and you know, I went. You know, I'm probably inconsistent for the for where I want to be, and mm. I'm not too happy. I'm not too sad about how I'm pl- how I've been playing, but like I want to turn it up a notch just back in another year. And if I'm serious about you know, this team and how much the group of men mean to me, yeah, because I I tell my parents all the time and my family, I like I genuinely love my teammates. I genuinely care about them, and it's like a it's weird because I spend probably more time with them than anyone else. You know, mm. in my family or things like that, and they probably know more than than about me than any of my family now. So uh, that's that's a bit weird. <laughs> you getting up to, Mister? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so then lonely nights, but yeah, nah. It's, you know, I, I I've got so much respect for the group of men in our team, and yeah. I've got so much admiration and and for the the leaders and and the coaching staff. I was just wait. I remember one of the boys rocked up late, and something that stuck with me is like he goes. Why is your time more important than my time with my kids and that? <laughs> yeah. And like, I was just sitting there, I was thinking about it. It wasn't me in trouble. I should have been in trouble. But I was thinking, I was like, fuck, like, that's a, that's like, that's one of those things that sting you. Like, yeah. Cause like, he obviously wants to go take his kids to school and preschool and be with his partner and that, like all the other boys do. But why is my 30 minutes sleeping mean more to him? Like mean more than his reason? So that was a pretty good lesson as well. And just little things like that. And mm. I try and pick up around, around the club. Um, I've got some notes in here about finances. You live off 350 bucks a week? Is yeah, that yeah. So I had to lift it up because the inflation's, days, brother. Days, <laughs> the inflation's, man. They're, they're getting me the gas. I had to ask for extra 50 bucks for the gas on their diesel. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, obviously, being an Islander boy, we don't get taught finances. Yep. Um, I think a lot of blue-collar kids coming through don't get taught about money because we're taught it's rude to talk money at the table yep. or, or ask people for money. Um, where's all this just come from? Yeah, mum as well. She's... Mum seems pretty switched she's, on. She's eh? pretty switched on, and <laughs> like I know, I obviously want generational wealth for my for my kids and my partner. And um, I live off four hundred a week. Had to bump up the extra fifty for the gassies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I obviously, if I need something or if I'm going out with the boys and I do want to enjoy my time, I do take out probably a hundred, two hundred bucks for beers and yeah. and stuff like that. But um, like yeah, that's. Like all my bills are paid for, I don't see it, but I do have access to all my accounts so I can see what's going on. And actually, how that came about, I'm going to sound like I'm freaking Wado's son here, but <laughs> Wado, I asked Wado about it. You've Jan. always been good at money, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. I, I wish I'd have been a bit better when I was younger, but I've always, like, I've always had a good time, but I always did well with it too because we yeah. looked after it. But that's, that was my biggest advice to, I think, what Ronnie was about to say. Because I've like, there's been a few boys like Braden and Toby and mm-hmm. a couple of other young boys. I always say like, get yourself like a finance guy that you trust that you can see everything that's happening, yeah. but you trust because they, for me, they just organise you. They 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 give you a basic understanding of you know money coming in, money going out, saving, investing. Because I remember you always be like on the phone, like, yeah. hey, bro, can we like, still like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm still on the phone. Like, oh, going wait, on? you're right. Well, that was, so I was three hundred a week as well back yeah. in the day, and then yeah, like so me and my manager used to solely look after my money, and it was three hundred a week all the time, and like I was stretched for a while because when I moved from Penner, I bought a house. I was lucky to start with because I debuted as a teenager. Was living at home with mum and dad, so I had all this money saved like instantly, pretty much. 
and it was back then. I, you know, I bought my first house for four hundred and sixty thousand in Glenmore, in Glenmore Park. Yeah, that house. and then there was first home buyers grant, so I didn't even need that much. I think I had a deposit saved in my first year of first grade because I played that <laughs> eight matches, games yeah, for matches, yeah. and I was living at home with mum and dad, going to school. I didn't have any expenses. But then when School I moved way. to Cronulla, you and still still <laughs> that's rude. Eh? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Eh? But it's then sorry. when I, I moved, so I travelled for a year at Cronulla, rented in. Uh, remember, I was in Maroubra there with Roms. Yeah, yeah. So I did that for a year, and the whole time I was looking for a house. And this was like pretty much two years after I'd bought the Glenmore house. But the buy house in Cronulla it was like I was looking at eight fifty. You know, that was mm. like my my stretch. And you just you could only get like units and that for there or or, or shitty blocks. And I, I look for. I must have looked at 30, you know, 35 different places over 18 months until I finally found the one that I still have now. Yeah. And at the time, I stretched myself. I had to sell the one at Glenmore. I, w I wasn't on, you know, massive money. And I was stretching myself. Even the 300 a week, sometimes I had to bring up the manager and he'd dip some of his own money to me just so I could get through the week. Yeah. But then the following year, I um, upgraded, assigned, uh, extended and upgraded and it was like a massive relief. Because um, the 300 wasn't just set in stone then. But I went probably 12, 12 80 a month where the 300 was actually all I had. Mm. So I was like, I had to, <laughs> it, it, it was <laughs> good, like right? That. Because, you know, when you stretch yourself and you grind, when you finally get through that period, the same thing actually happened to me in COVID too because I bought a, a couple of other things and then it was a 20% uh, 20 deposit. So pretty much whacked up a heap of my savings. Yeah. And where I have all my other money is in the stocks. And that was hemorrhaging, right? So I, <laughs> I couldn't pull any money out of that. So yeah. me and the missus actually just buckled down. Lucky she's quite frugal herself. So we buckled down for a while. But then post-COVID, it actually turned out to be the best thing ever because we, we grinded for 12 months, got through, houses went up, stocks mm. came back. It was, it was good. Like it, was a good, it was a hard period, but it was a good period. And I think when you're young, if you have a finance guy who gives you a budget, teaches you the basic skills of you know, money in, money out, investing mm. you learn the grind like you le you learn the reason behind grinding. you go okay 300 is not i don't need 300 because every time i dip into the other side it takes something away from anywhere so yeah. and yeah. once you're organized and understand it i think you see value in it you understand well, once you understand it you, you understand the value behind it yeah so when like, it's good that all these like ronnie's got a finance guy braid's got a finance guy Toby's awesome, got a young guy, like, yeah uh well Blake is a bit different because he's with his brother and his yeah. old man, but they're all buying houses. Like Nico just bought a house. It's like for me as an older guy, it's like good. They're doing the right thing with their money. Like you see it going to the right place. Yeah. And you know what? If you're doing that, or if you want to go out and have a beer and have a, you know, do what you want to do on the side, that's okay. Like you're allowed to have a good time as well, mm. as long as the rest is is working for you while. You know, while you're getting it, because just have some pre-drinks at home, eh? <laughs> just <laughs> sit there, yeah, I'm busy that Go to Wano's house, give Dan's fridge, and then nah, nah, that's what we do, and get kicked out every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 boys, out of here. <laughs> been there three times, got kicked out all three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's actually a really important part because obviously being Samoan, like I said, like we we ain't taught about yep. money, and it's changed. Like my my parents used to go save, 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 and save for retirement, but that doesn't really work anymore. Yeah, so well, like I I learned like savings just like it's sitting in the banks like. Not to really do anything, thing, like, yeah. see how he's kind of spread his money out like you would have done the same like putting into stocks you know, real estate and finding it making your money work for you was probably the biggest thing that i've been trying to learn and yeah. i think the word saving too sounds boring yeah, yeah. Investing, like, saving, yeah. like i'm investing for yeah investing future, yeah. Or something like that so well that's like that's what i'll kind of learn like even learning off him when he showed me like how his bank accounts work like he, he comes from a humble heart when you're showing me like he's got money i was yeah. like oh so when he was showing me he's like this is how i break it down this is it I was probably just looking at these numbers. Going, <laughs> <laughs> got a loan, got to give me a loan. But yeah, just to see that and how far like yeah. where it has come from. He's, from. he's a wistie boy that's done well for himself and, and worked hard at it, you know. And so well, see, again, like, I was lucky because Gauza taught me a lot the way he did his stuff. And like, yeah, okay. I'm, obviously, Louis, these are all guys who grew up the same way that we do, but it's different to what you learn from your parents because it's all about when you're young, right? Saving, pay your house off, pay your house off, pay yeah. your house off. There's no you know, remortgage or take like equity, what can I do with this? There's no or portfolio over here. There's there's none of that. It's all about just paying your mortgage off. It's like, yeah. well, hang on a minute. If I've got a $2 million house and I own it, well, I might borrow $2 million to see if I can make some more. Right? That's <laughs> about understanding, you know, debt and if you can Good service, day, the, service yeah. the debt. So, it's, but it's just, they're all lessons you learn. Like we all, like I learned on the run from other players mm. who had been in the same situation as me. And it's changed a lot now. The world's, 
on your phone there's a lot more things to do so and guys are like a lot more open to yeah, sort of yeah, talk yeah. about because I, I like i want to like say someone like uh Renault, back in our day like because he was like comfortable with who he was in his old skin in his own skin he would have had to kind of conform to what the team were doing does yeah, that make yeah, sense yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he gets like a little bit shy because he's not being who he actually is and then he's not comfortable asking those type of questions because i played with a lot of islander boys and all very shy yeah like it's it's a bit but, of a general yeah, generational change sure. like, there's a lot more money in the game now yeah, yeah. Like, you know I, when, I, when we first started i remember petro Sign from the Broncos, and he signed for three fifty, I think, or four hundred. And now it's like, no, nah, Wayne, Wayne Bennett, he doesn't sign props more than two hundred, right? And Petro had played thirty Origins in a row, and that was his payday. But now you get a kid come in and play, you know, a couple seasons, and they they've got potential. You know, you get a million dollars. Yeah, for sure. Like, and so all of a sudden, if you don't have the right processes in place to handle that sort of money, and yeah. Cause you're not going to get it your whole life right no nah, no nah. like, that's the biggest thing that i'm learning now yep is trying to subsidize everything like you know all my expenses that i've had how much i'm geared up how do i still make that work now that i'm not on the same salary that i used to be mm. and you know fortunately i've you know been doing it for a long time so we're okay but it's still it's still a struggle for me right to live that <coughs> same life try and um you know try and balance the books pretty much mm. without that monthly jamming into the back pocket you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and there's a lot more to manage now so it's good that the young guys are open and willing to talk about it and get get advice and that's important like him showing you like what the money brother yeah. that's, that's huge bro that's a that's a massive life lesson and he didn't make it like the point of like, like trying my to money you know what i mean that's yeah, probably no, no, what no, no, i respected no. most was like he wasn't like looking like look at my money like bro, it was successful like, people do like when i hang around business people yeah. bro, they, like they'll open up p l sheets or yeah. numbers and like same thing it, it's not a uh, bro I see something in you yeah. and this is what I want to teach you. And then no, I'm the same as you, like I start looking at it. And <laughs> yeah. like, oh, but then you didn't, bro, you generally think yeah. when you see it like that, you're like, fuck, that could be me. Yeah, 100%. Like, yeah. It's, if I feel like if you see it, like he's just coming from a bad place with it, like, and that's totally up to you, you know, probably your thought process on that is probably the wrong yeah, way. That's on so you. That's, that's on, that's on you. you, exactly. Yeah. So when I was, you know, every time I'm learning, I kind of go in with an open mind of, all right, like how can I spin it in my way or how can I do it my way? And, and still learn so yeah uh, i enjoy the learning process of things like that and i said like because i was on football and you see the guys get paid all the big money and sort of stuff like that and i used to be in this mindset of like oh like my little period's over but now i'm past that and out of it bro there's no salary cap and business like oh, yeah. yeah what i earn is up to me now that's it it's what you got yeah what can you do with what you got and what what can i work at to get some more like yeah and i, I was hanging around these dudes that are super successful that are worth like say over 100 yeah. mil yeah. and the same thing bro it changes your mindset so when you go from small town into football you see guys on a couple hundred k you think that's the ceiling then you get out of football and you see guys like up here you're like Oh shit, the yeah. ceiling's just got a little bit bigger. Well, that's what's pretty good with my financial advisor. Like when he goes to a dinner in there in Goldie, when I'm with my family in there, he'll bring me with his like stockbrokers, oh, cool. the guys that own ASX businesses. Like, yeah. and, and so I'm mixing around, like some dude was talking about how a $75 million yacht got <laughs> robbed during COVID and someone's driving it down the <laughs> highway and someone's calling him going, why, is your, why are you going to the like, yeah. you your yacht? And he's like, I didn't take my yacht out. So uh, like, things like that, learning off those type of people. And um, no, I appreciate him for that as well. And that's why I like I tell my mum like she's always the one encouraging me you know go sit down just be all ears in there and and be a fly on the wall and listen <coughs> take it in and then you know, hopefully you get it's the funny chance. Fuck, might have to get your mum on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny too because like as you know, athletes are very you know they have goals right, but they're very short term goals. They're very they're short term yeah. goals right. And you got to look at the value, like especially if it comes to that sort of stuff. Like you got to be looking ten years down the track, fifteen yeah. years down the track, or what mm -hmm. it could be. Not you know obviously there's stuff you can do in the intermediate, but um to like get short-term gain but it's all about like time time mm. is get, getting in putting the work in which is what you know how we're also designed as well we have that you know work hard get in do your work do what you need to do but it's more week to week season to season goals where mm. this other is these life these things in life are a lot longer you got to be able to see five years down the track ten years down the track and just okay i'm willing to live a little bit less now or to take a little bit of a hit now or not do the things i want to do now because you know, in ten years track, like ten years time, you see it, you understand it. Like, yeah. you, but you need to live through it to understand. <laughs> yeah, you have to live through it. Eh? But I remember, like, again, like talk about <laughs> how long I looked for that house for of mine. I was like, I got it for eight sixty and was stretched. Yeah. That was in two thousand thirteen. Like, mm. you look at it now, you go, oh, if you knew now what you knew back then, you'd pay pay more for it, right? Yeah, yeah whatever. So it's just, 
it's time, it's experience, it's learning, and like these, these guys are just at the start. Yeah. It's exciting to see. It's good uh, seeing like the old boys because like. Like I'm not naive to the fact that you know you live a short career and you're lucky to even get ten years or lucky to play as long as Wado has, right? And so I'm thinking, no, I want to get out of this game safe and my body all working. I want to be able to hold my kids and be able to like be a father, and then I want to have my money as well and get out like yeah. that and and be able to live a comfortable life as well outside of us. So it's good seeing these like the older boys coming to the back end of their careers, kind of seeing how they address it all and how they've set themselves up and Wado has, and so. Yeah. I look at that and go, that's the example there. Like, I want to be able to get out, hold my kids, be with my kids, go to Canada if I want to go to Canada or wherever I want to go and, and be able to you know, live a good <laughs> no, life. There's actually, like, like, there's actually a sneaky part of me, like, because <laughs> I'm close to you guys, like, I love the idea of moving to Canada. We're just <laughs> shit about footy. Yeah. And, like, I could see myself going over there, like, in a couple of years' time and just, like, you boys talking here in a couple of years. Like, whatever happened to Wade? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, like a big grizzly bear in yeah. Canada yeah. somewhere. Yeah. 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 Whatever happened to him? Oh, the last I heard he moved to Canada. Was like, <laughs> yeah. there, like, ice skating on the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's the cool thing about like once you get past because like football because it's always in the same time period. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you've lived the same cycle for the last fucking like, ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so like even like say it's me next week. I go to New York next week and yeah. I'm there for like a month. So I'm just going to park up. Like, Mate, if you get James, fly up to Montreal, man. <laughs> yeah. Go to house up in Montreal you go up there and stay on the lake for a bit if you want oh shit you're going alright the kid. Yeah. <laughs> it's good mate it's nice it's different up there it's, it's I've been to Toronto I went to catch go, up go to Darcy. Montreal man Montreal is cool before it gets frozen too cold like Montreal is a nice city man see the bushfires like up there at the moment it's just smoked yeah, out the whole yeah. of New York it's pretty it's, crazy yeah, it's pretty, it's always has that stuff over there and, oh, they probably say the same about here when we get our bushfires but it's kind of I weird like, like in LA but mostly isn't it the bushfires normally yeah LA's big on like Cali's because it's so dry but like mm. I think Canada's like cold it's where they've got bushfires and shit well, now it'd be it'd be summer over there for them mm. now but like that's they get it's, imagine like the rocks but a bigger city but built the same way like old school yeah summer like all the terraces man they've got rooftop off terraces it's a cool spot man if, you get, if you're in new york for a month just pop up for a few days in montreal <laughs> might do for just the keys. let me know where you are you can go up to montreal blanc <laughs> yeah, house. cool sounds good um you talk about players getting money and you're a big part of the rlpa um, and I, you've always been for the boys, even like when you're young, you're going for bad and not afraid to have tough conversations. What's that whole experience been like, especially this past however long it's been? Yeah, it's been good. I think like overall, because I've learned a lot, right? Like I, I sort of, I've always been sort of actively involved on the sidelines, um, just because you know, I don't mind asking questions. I don't yeah, know yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like that too. I'll if ask. I, if I think it. something like this is how I think it should be, like, and it's not that way, just tell me why it's not that way. Help me ex like, explain it, understand it. And then I go, okay, well, okay, that's fair enough. Um, and then the COVID period happened, right? And when the COVID period happened, the, at, the game shut down. I was like the oldest at, at the Sharks then. And there's a lot of uncertainty whether we're playing again, um, you know, when we're training, like, salaries wages whatever so it was sort of all hands on deck there mm. and i was involved in all the, pretty much all the meetings even with greenberg before valandis oh, sorry before andrew abdo would come on and peter sorry uh, greenberg and valandis and then abdo came in after and then we worked for all of that the COVID periods protocols getting the game back up and running so then i was sort of entrenched so then the, when the next thing roll, rolled around was like COVID um revisions and then the money come back into the game because it wasn't as bad. I was, I was then I was already I was on the board. I joined the board then, so I was involved in that, and then it was sort of rolled into the CBA after that. So then <laughs> now I'm involved in that too. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and like, it's been good. Like, it's been good because I don't mind. Like, you learn. I learn a lot because we have board meetings right and sit with in, like directors, so non, yeah. not yet non, non financial directors, directors from different avenues that I've come from, and you learn a lot from them. Like there's pretty impressive people there. You know we always judge. Like, our, like footy players, right? we judge ourselves against them because that's our wheelhouse, right? that's our profession, that's what we know. Mm. And we say, well, he's really impressive for this reason or this reason. And a lot of it comes back to how he carries himself, trains, plays, and performs on the weekend. For sure. But then you get out of that environment and you, you sit in like the boardroom and you hear these other people speak and you go, oh, wait, he's, this guy's he's pretty impressive. impressive. <laughs> well, she, she, like, and some of the business women I've come across too, like they're impressive, man. They're impressive people and you sort of get through their confidence and their experience, you get drawn to them and you learn, you talk to them, you get 
you understand that. Was there elements of imposter syndrome when you're sitting in those boardrooms or do you always feel comfortable that you knew what was going on? No, I've always felt comfortable because I, like I said, I, I've always been happy to ask questions I don't know mm. the answer to and, I don't, and if I want to understand more, I've always been happy to ask about it or I'm even happy to challenge someone if I think, I think what I know is more than that. But then I don't have an ego with it either. Like I'm happy to be told the right way or learn from it. Like I feel like I've always been that, that since I was young. Mm. It's always held me in good stead. Like ask a question. I don't feel like an idiot if I don't know the answer. Like I feel actually better about it because I learned something from it. Yeah, cool. Um, and now I've just sort of been involved the whole time. And through it, I, I feel, you know, I've got a good relationship with Peter Vland. He's got a great relationship with Clint Newton. Like they're the two, you know, boss of the RPA and boss of the game. Like, I feel like, the, if anything, the experience has been good for me at an individual level. And Is it draining? It does at times. <laughs> it does at times right. become hard because I'm juggling a, a fair bit. Mm. Um, you know, I'm obviously on like a director there. I sit on the board and then, you know, Cronulla is still where my heart is. I pull like all my effort and time and pretty much, you know, every opportunity I have to think about our team, to think about how we can get better you know, where we can improve, what the week looks like, how can I help the boys, like, mm. I pour a lot of time into that. And I think that the only thing that helped, and I know I've got the media stuff on the side, which is is good, and it's kicking off, it's helped me out, you know, talk about the subsidy and, and meat and ends meat compared to what I used to be paid, or that's, that, that's helped heaps. Yep. Um, and it's enjoyable to do. And then, like, the Woods, Woods is good too. Eh? Woods is good. Yeah, he's, he's good, good to listen to. Eh? He's angling for something he just, like, like he's angling for the big time. He wants, yeah. he wants a breakfast show or an afternoon show. He needs it, bro. He needs his own show. All yeah, the time. he's got the best. He it it reminds me of Mace a little bit, where they're not afraid to say. Yeah, what's he's on always their been mind. like that. Like, he's, like, he's always been loves his footy, like absolute footy nerd. Yeah, watches every game. I'm talking like he'll every watch game. reserve grade when they're on. He'll watch the Super League. Mate, if there was an under eights game on TV, he would watch that. Like <laughs> he loves it, um, and he's good at it. And then. Yeah, the only other time I, I would say the best thing for me now is my kids. I'm yeah. listening to my kids. Like when I'm with them and I'm chilling with them, it's like the phone actually goes off and it's cool time, it's downtime. So that's where it doesn't drain me, I think, because I'm able to completely separate. Like, I'm not thinking about other stuff when I'm with them. I'm taking them down the park, playing footy. Yeah. I'm trying to get them the golf. Like, <laughs> yeah, get I them in the golf, bro. I take them the golf and sit them in the car with me and spend three hours with them. And like the phone's off and it's like as soon as i get home if i need to do anything it's like i'm ready to go because mm. i've had that off time with my boys mm. so it's 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 been good that sort of stuff um you're quite a like broad thinker what would you like to see change about the game uh, not so much straight away and this this could be like pre-seasons are too long just just from a holistic view like what would you change about the game um, like now and in five five ten years i might like do you play too much games too many games? I think, yeah. Like, ideally, you know, it probably hurts at the start commercially. But if we get 18 teams, right, imagine playing every game, like, sorry, every team once. And then, so there's 17 games. And then you have a couple of buys. So, say, 20 rounds. And then, yeah. or say, three buys is 20 rounds plus origin. There's, you know, 22 rounds you can sort of squeeze out. And a final series. Maybe you could add to the final series, and then you still get your twenty-seven rounds of, of footy overall. Yeah, I think the season could be short, and the draw is weird, man. Like you can never have an even draw because some teams play each other twice. We only play some team once. You know, your boys when they're situated around Origin. Like, I don't know if you'd ever find a perfect solution around that, but like the draw, I think if they could condense it a little bit. Yeah, if you played everyone once and then played, say, your like almost like conference, so you guys play like Dragons yeah. or someone within your local sort of area twice because you can play them home yeah. and away, I think that'll be a way to go, wouldn't it? Yeah, and like I don't know if they're ever going to get that right, but that's something I would look at. The, the one I'll do the most is like, like past players, man, like clubs, clubs in the game and the RLPA working together mm. to sort of – Put some more status and recognition and the ability to look after past players. Like, What's it at now? What are they doing for it now? Not a lot in that space, which we've been fighting hard for. And I don't like the funding for it. And the money's got to come from somewhere, right? Which is always the issue. But I think for, I don't like, and it, it's got to be a combined effort from the clubs the, and the RPA and the game because you look at all the other sports in the world, like in the, their past players. And Australia is a bit different where we don't have the prestige or the renown. Like once, you know, once you finish, you sort of move off into the sunset, and not unless you stay in the game in a coaching role or media role. And there's only so many roles. There's only eh? so many roles, yeah. but like, I'd love to see some areas where, like, 
you, you're always attached. Like, I know there's men in the league, but you sort of like it's almost like an alumni or something where you just you're always involved. Like clubs, I, I think for past players can offer you know more to do. Just I don't know. I, I, it's hard because I, I feel like I've played with so many great players, and they just once they're finished, they're just gone. But they're the guys who, like, week in, week out, were the reason we're winning games or, you know, getting through training or having success. And mm. I just feel like they don't – once they're done, you sort of have this – the next crew comes through and you it's almost like your welcome's over. You, you've done your job, move on, thanks for coming. And, and and a bit from them too, they don't feel welcome to come back. I feel like Yeah, that's a big one. That's yeah, a big I one, feel I like, reckon, hey, yeah. Like any, any past player who comes down to the Sharks, you know, they, they speak – like Fitz has been good at it. It's like, mate, as long as we're ever here, like you bit played before us, you got a Sharks number just as us. Like your contributions, you know, just as valuable as ours. You you want to walk through the gates, you're welcome to walk through the gates anytime. Come watch training and come and hang out because you wore the jersey just the same as we did. Yeah. I think the Warriors are doing it really well. Like I look at their social yeah. content at the moment. They, they look like a agree. like a club, eh? Like it looks fun to be it's around good, all the man, old like, guys. I think it's good. And I think like it actually, if you get it done right, it gives value to the young guys too, because they were like, well, if I dedicate myself to the, the club or the or the game, you know, it's not just over once it's over. Mm. Like, if I give myself an, a, a good enough like run and carry myself right and do the right thing and lead the game in a good place, well, then you know, 20 years is, is something I'm connected to forever. Where there is a little bit of a disconnect at the moment, and I feel like I'd love to see that. Like, I'd love. You know, because I was a footy tragic too growing up. Like, just all the old players are coming. I love when they come in and tell their stories because we're sitting in their shoes, right? They did it before us. They yeah. paved the way for us. Um, so I think that, that that space, I'd love to see some more done in that space. And I think it takes everyone. The game. It's almost clubs. like... Remember RLPA when we first started? Yeah. Like, you'd have to drag. Like, yeah. We've got an RLPA meeting. would be three guys yeah. there from the club. They're like, you had to be like... It's, that's changed a lot, but that, that stuff takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It and does. needs evidence too for people to sort of start yeah. coming in. Well, it starts at the club level, right? Because they have the connection, really. That's where a player has the most connection to mm. even the club or the players that they play with. Even though you move on and, and play at different clubs, you, you still have that connection to that playing group and, and the club because of that playing group. So I, th- I don't know how it works, like h- how you would facilitate it because it is a big ask. You can't keep track of everyone, right? Players, no. people come and go. And, and some know, people don't want to come and back. And life exp- like changes, but I just, I feel like if, if, if you know, whatever the, it's around, like if you feel like, you, oh man, you know what, maybe I should go back there. There should always be a spot for you back there somewhere. Mm, mm. What about you? Obviously you're sort of in the start of your career, uh, mid part of your career. What would you like to see change about the game? You don't have to have the yeah. answer. I just want oh, to see. Like what I said, probably shorten the game, like the season up. I think you just get better produce like out of everyone, better product as well. Like the boys won't be as hurt, like, you know, the back end of the season where you're kind of going those last like six, seven rounds and the boys are just battling away. Yeah. I think resting each other once, you, can, you know you got one shot at it at that game, so you don't want to miss that. Um, and it's all those little small things. Yeah, that little small pain, things, Like yeah. fucking bruised finger. Yeah, those little <laughs> fingers and just your whole hand hurts all of a sudden. <laughs> it's so. the first. It's this time of the year too, like winter. Yeah, starts winter. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's just like stuff like that. Obviously, you know, past players as well. Um, I think our clubs, you know, moving towards the right direction of that and making them feel more involved. Um, but yeah, just, I think also social, like we spoke about that social media side, the protection of players. Um, obviously it's a controversial thing, but just not, when I'm going out drinking or, or like for a beer, like anyone else would, I honestly don't feel safe. Like uh, I'm telling, just you know, when I'm going out for beers, I'm sitting with the boys. Yeah, I feel safe in terms of like, no one's gonna hurt me, but in terms of, you know, what people can say about they can me say and, anything and, and, anything, and then yeah. I get hammered for it. Like it's, you know, if I sit down with a beer waiter and me and him have a conversation about something and someone just walks past and just, you know, hears yeah. something and takes it out of context and then goes out there and just blasts us. Like, where do we, def- how do we defend ourselves? Like, and I feel like you know, right now as a player and a young player, I've got no protection around. Like, and mm-hmm. people just say, I'll oh, get on with it. Just be a good person, blah, blah. blah. And you know, it's funny cause you know, I want to be, a, I want to be able to go, you know, have a beer with my mates. I want to be able to go live a normal life, right? And obviously you do get that taken away. You got to understand that it comes with the territory, but how do we protect our players in that space and um, you know, their mental health as well? Because you know, you're big on mental health, eh? Hey? Yeah, like I, you know, I, I drive, uh, obviously the open room in our, in our club as well. We, we try and like Nico is a big advocate for it as well. And he makes, he makes it known that if you want to talk to anyone about anything, whether it's financial stuff or um, just family business, then be open to that. and. 
no, I think I feel like that's no, that's powerful in any club, and we should be driving that. But yeah, just probably that more work around protecting our players um, mm. and f- them feeling safe when they go out for a beer that they don't have to feel like, oh no, what, whatever I say or whatever. Um, obviously, you got to have that care, but yeah, it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a hard thing to talk you, got, you guys looked after in Canola from because it's you guys, are, even though you're part of Sydney, you're very isolated, aren't you? So and there's not really does it, is northeast and that still pumping or it's not, not really? really. Nah, it's all it's all, kind it's of all gone, man. Oh, it's quiet, no, it's good anymore. There's a few little pop up bars like Queens Lane and and uh, Blind Bear and you know northeast still goes. Highfields is good, but uh, to be fair, it's generally we're pretty good in, in Cronulla. Yep. Like, yeah. you know, the boys don't carry on. Yeah, there. we do have like a pretty good young crew. Yeah, they got, the head, got a Zed screw on there. Um, <laughs> and then you know when we do go out, we sort of yeah, everyone's Stick polite together. and it is like a bit of a that one town, one community feel. Like everyone mm. in the shy is either a Dragons fan or, or a Sharkies fan, right? But when we're out together, they know like, oh, we're Sharks, we're for the team. Everyone's pretty respectful. Like it's a good, it's a good environment. There. It always has been. Like even when we used to go out and cause some issues down there, it <laughs> <laughs> was always you and Chico. No, nah, we had a rife, <laughs> we had a rife crew, eh? Yeah, it was we were very carefree bit. though. Like that's yeah. what I mean. There was never any issues. Like yeah, no one really causing any dramas or. I feel like we, we as, as a playing group, respect probably a fitty too much to go. And yeah, like, you don't want to fuck up a good thing. Like, yeah, yeah, in our club, we respect our, you know, obviously our senior players. Like, if Wade was to text and say, fuck boys, this is the curfew, this is this and this. Like, one time we tried to go out, Mad Cow, when we went to Townsville. <laughs> fuck, man, we were all the boys pulling every string to try and try get, get out. out. Like, yeah. like, on the bus, eh? Obviously, like, Wade is our go-to man for <laughs> the tough questions. And I said, oh, fuck, all right, boys. Like, we rallied up the young boys and we're like, <laughs> me, Tobes, and then we're like, oh, we get into Wado and we're hopefully Wado goes and asks <laughs> tough coach, questions. Yeah. And then, so we did that. Wado goes, has this, like, obviously, his little talk <laughs> with coach. And, like, Wado knows he's, like, he's been around long enough. So he goes, comes back. Tells the coaching staff, we get back to our hotel and all the boys are getting re- like planning to get their best kit on. Where they tells the coaching staff, get off the bus, turns around, he goes, All right, boys, I'm sorry, like tonight's not gonna be that night. <laughs> yeah, we just gotta cop it. Um, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna sit in this team room, we're gonna enjoy each other's company beers, and then we're gonna get on this plane, we'll stay safe, get on the plane tomorrow and fly back home and we're gonna be better for it. Yeah, and that's exactly what we've done, and we enjoyed we each other. We actually had a good night. Though, we had right? a fuck, <laughs> man. We found who the true soldier. Go. We, yeah. Yeah. Go, I, I think the worry at that stage was it was like this COVID spikes are back. Yeah. So it was oh, like, okay. You don't want to be the team that it was. You were allowed to go out. Like there was no yeah. protocols or anything. But the COVID was if you had it, you're out for a week, right? And if it spread, we like players were, like teams were losing players, and Fitzy was like, I think it was probably mid last year. So we were just yeah. getting there. Like we just sort of. We were just hitting some straps to so go to the back end of the year. Of mm. And Fitzy, well, Fitzy's played the game too. He knows what Mad Cow's about. Like, <laughs> it's, it's on there. And then yeah. he went, we're not, we're not doing it. Like, we're not putting our season at risk for one night out. Like, if they want to have a beer, they can wait, they can wait and they can go home. Blah, blah. So then I was sitting there talking to him. And I was like, I get it, sweet. Let me talk to the boys. Because it's better to come from me because... Because they're they not the bad guys, eh? Well, yeah. they're not the bad guys. They're doing the right things. Plus, the boys know, like, i got skin in the game. Like, I would come for a beer like that night too. If mm. everyone went out for sure, I'd come. So um, it was all right. I was sitting in the team. We actually had that much fun. We had like a ping pong tournament. Ping pong we had some cards being Poker. played. and It was good. Like, you know what it's like that next day anyway after a trip. Like, oh. you, you, you wake up, you're a bit dusty. the boys a favour, eh? You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're trying to the, find your way home. Yeah, you're, on aer- you're on the aeroplane, man. Everyone's sort of a bit wounded. So you sort of get up and you're like, oh, you, don't, you didn't really miss out on anything because nah. we had a good night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Fitz is good at that too. Like, it's not as if he says no all the time. Like, yeah, he's good. He's keen for us to have dinners. Yeah, he's old school, isn't he? Yeah, a lot of times we actually invite, like Ronnie's already said, well, like, we invite the staff, we bring them down. There's a good crew. Bring the girls down, like, and the kids, it's, it's good. Mm. I think, yeah, like, yeah, it's with Fitzy in there. Like, you, because the, the way he cares for you, you kind of just, yeah. like, when he says, he's, his number one rule is just don't be a dickhead. Like, yeah. don't be a dickhead in the community. Don't be a dickhead anywhere around there. Just... Be a good man, be a good partner, be a good son. That's it. That's not that hard. So yeah. I think for us young dudes, it's like, oh, like we always talk about it. Like if we know something's wrong, we're like, oh, I probably shouldn't. Like just because of that respect. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I'll pull up. Like, and the one that probably gives him the most headaches is obviously Toby. He, he loses <laughs> hair over Toby. So he always comes in like sometimes. He's like, oh, what are you worried about? And he's like, oh, fucking Toby. Like I'm just worried about him. I'm like, yeah. oh, so good. He's gonna let Toby be Toby. Yeah, no, he's, he's good at letting Toby. He's actually, moved down there, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's moved down. Him. He's um, it's funny because Toby, he's, he's such a free spirit, <laughs> but um, uh, and it took a while for him to really get in with the boys because he comes in, he's loud and it's I don't know, yeah. Man. So he sort of it takes a while. He's in a quiet taste, but 
once you realise how much he actually cares about the group and how how hard he works and uh, what he's willing to do for everyone else, like he comes in and he's like, yeah, he might be different, but he's our different. He's our guy, so he yeah. Gets He's good, but he, he's a worry sometimes because oh. he said some stuff. You go, have you been serious? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like even for me, because normally a lot of the um, the boys, if there's anything going on, I can sort of go, oh, I've been through that, so I can I understand it, sweet man. Just worry about this. Him, him I just go, like, be on your own. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help me, man. You yeah. would organise like, because he wants the boys to go out to the city heaps. Yeah. He always wants us to go out east, and he's like, oh, how does like that? He's like, how do I get the boys there? So he'll pay for a party bus. For wherever, like we go drink locally at a pub, and he'll next thing you know, there's a party bus waiting outside. He's like, Oh, boys, everyone jump on. <laughs> like, just Larry has, like, everyone jump that's on. good for the memories, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah all, all the boys are like, important. Oh, like, yeah. It's going change now that he's, he's in the hood. And Nico, yeah, yeah, he's Nico's, yeah. Bought yeah. Nico's, bought Nico's bought a house, like, you know what it's like. It's not, it's nothing better. Bro, than Nico just, basically lives in Bondi. He's, well, now he's bought a house, <laughs> yeah, down there. good. Stay down there, Nico. Yeah, so now it's like. You know, you, you're happy just to have the beers and then go back to someone's house and chill out and because there's, you know there's less yeah. dramas there. Like. Yeah, and it's hard to get, like, t like back when, when we used to go to yours, so we used to just stay there because, like, going to Casablanca and yeah, back, yeah, you're yeah, down yeah, 300 yeah, full yeah, taxis. Yeah, Ubers, yeah. <laughs> well, drink, drinking with the, like, these are, like, boys. I always go try and sneak in, like I said, drinking with the boys and that. Like, it's just like, I, my missus always laughs at me. She's like, why do you want to just go sit at a fucking pub and drink? Yeah. I'm like, that's the best part. Like, there's yeah. something you don't realise. Like, it's, you sit there, you listen to the most out there stories and then you get to like spin in your little one and the boys like oh that makes me feel young like you know what I mean? <laughs> get them a good day kicking they yeah the like boys it. start living vicariously oh, it's good man i used to sit there at a pub like I, I probably enjoy to be honest i probably enjoy sitting at a pub just sipping on beers and relaxing mm. more than going out partying like going hard like and it sounds a bit weird because i'm 23 nah, years good, old but, like, but no, it's, that's it's probably right. and then go home and i'm done you know yeah, yeah. Well, i enjoy that more like, even but to to be fair when we were younger we would always go out and even go to clubs and that, which is fine. But it wasn't really never our scene. Our scene was like somewhere in the day, having a few beers, telling yeah, stories, just, just talking spraying shit. Everyone, like, yeah, just spraying everyone. Just spraying each other. That was the release. Right? Just talking. Like, and we would, for sure we'll go out because we just, that was like, we just never stopped really. We wanted to keep the good times going. But yeah. we had our most fun like in the day, like sitting, like, sitting down, mm. telling like stories, what's happening at training, like bagging <laughs> each other. <laughs> But he used to get in the norm in that so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing about those drinks. Uh, yeah. Banter, like... Yeah. Us internationals. <laughs> <laughs> That's my one claim to fame. The old one Kiwis game. If I could tell me in good stead, man. Just check that one Kiwi game. Dude. Like I was playing rip footy when I was your age. <laughs> just shit like that, eh? Um, just a couple more issues on the game. Obviously, uh, head knocks. Like, uh, do you think it's a... Like, we... we sound like we're old ass guys but do you love the little change and how much it can affect the game but also like when it when they touch your head sin bins and the stuff that comes with it where's your mind on that yeah i think like, we've always seen like the changes happen and affect the game like even before this remember like it used to be like when you couldn't touch chicken like, wings or yeah, yeah and but like when we like used to be able to just it used to be a free-for-all kickers like <laughs> you could hear them and do whatever like and then it actually changed a fair bit and that there was a crackdown for a while so the crackdowns always affect the game for a bit. I think it's been like for this year with the um the sin bins with the hip drops and that, I reckon it's actually come back a bit and it's sort of mellowed leveled out, out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, leveled out a little bit. Um but the concussion stuff is just the space we live in now. Like there's just so much research into it. Like you need to take care of the players, you need to you know, you need to take take the decision out of their hands. Mm, because 'cause everyone's staying you on, need to protect you need to protect them like we need to protect us from ourselves because Ultimately, like, I talk about being that competitor and that guy. Like, you don't want to let yourself down. You don't want to let your teammates down. Like, if it's a 50-50, and even, like, again, we talk about, um, like, the, the players carry injuries all the time, right? You, you're very rarely throughout the year 100%. Yeah. So if you're 85%, 90% that's fit. That's a win. <laughs> but, like, we, we call that 100% fit. Like, that's just how we are. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, but haven't been able to run that well this week. My ankle's a bit sore. But, you know, come game day, I'll be like, I can get through it. I can get through it's not 100%, it's like 85, 90%. So you may as well call 85%, 100%. Mm. So if you have a head knock, right, and you, have, you haven't you have got these protocols in place and you're feeling good towards the back end of the week, but, you, you know, it's only seven days, but you're not quite there. If you had the option, yeah. you know, 85% is 100%. Like, I'm good. Like, mm. So I think the decisions are good. Like, And longer term, we're going to get more research, have an opportunity to look at the research and understand the data because I've been through my own issues with the head knocks. I end up sitting six months out just because I wasn't worried about um, 
how I felt because I always passed the test and felt fine, right? I felt sweet. I was more worried about what would happen, like what other people would do. Like, would they make me retire? Would they make me have this time out? Because, you know, at that stage, Friendy had retired, Bordo yeah, retired. I was, was on the back of that. I was like, well, will the game step in or the club step in and make me retire? So mm. I just went, well, to, I'm going to hit the ripcord, have an extended period off just to give myself an, a chance to prolong my career. Not because I was worried about repercussions, but I was worried about the pressure that the club might receive from the game or the game I might receive from the game because of the head knocks. Mm. So I'm, it's such a hard subject because it's so subjective, right? Only you know as an individual, only I know, only he knows. Everyone's different. Every concussion is different. Fuck, we, we, we were, um, Nigel Plum, he retired. <laughs> we, we played yeah, with Nigel him, bro, Plum. but it got to a point, bro, you'd like tap him on the shoulder. Like he'd, he'd be like pushing through a line and no contact and you just get in front of him. Bro, I hit him like just at the right point, boom, knocked out. It was fucking scary, eh? And like, you'd have chats with him and you couldn't remember like conversations yeah. that you'd had from last week. Well, that was my worry um, after I had my third one. Because you're a smart dude. Because I was like, lose the IQ. No, no, no not, not so much that, but because I, I, I thought the third one, so the, the first one that year was a proper just head in the wrong spot, caught a guy stepping across my hip out before mm. I, like before he hit me. And actually, I got up and kept playing, but it was I was 100% concussed. So I was, Moise was talking to me and I was nowhere. Like, he was like, mate, you were, you were gone. The second one was uh, similar. It was a, I went up on the inside and got a hip from... Um, Hips are the worst. Yeah, a hip again on the out and I was out that time and again I was rattled. And the third one, I came across bodies and I thought it was a big collision. But once I watched the replay, it wasn't that big a collision at oh, all. Okay. So in my head, I was like, maybe I've lost my jaw. I like, didn't see it when Boxing, boxers lose yeah. their jaw. I was like, maybe I've lost my jaw. And then that's when like I... I was I'm an R I was gonna do it for the rest of the year. So I decided to have that period off. But even coming back, I had the doubts like maybe I've lost my draw, maybe it doesn't take me that much for it to happen no more mm. because I've had them in the past. Um and, you know, fortunately for me, touch wood, it hasn't happened since. But that was one of the worries for me. Because that sort of is a big issue, right? When they're getting It was almost like how Kalen's one was happening this year, yeah, wasn't it? It looks like it's just way easier than it should be. Than it should be or what what it's been in the past. And I actually worried for a bit. I said maybe I've lost my chin and I need to give it away. But then, you know, once you get back into the contact and training, you cop, you know, innocuous knocks all the time yeah. and, you, and you feel fine. I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm sweet. Yeah. But it's a hard one, man. And again, it's so subjective. Everyone's different. I think these protocols are good, are a good start to give everyone enough. A base, of, like a really a base, strong baseline. Yeah, must, yeah. like a, a, an opportunity for all the data and the research to keep being developed and, you know, hopefully some, you know, better procedures to get through it yeah I, I, like i understand all that sort of medical side of it it's really important but like say someone like um like flag like getting simbent in origin yeah. like i just don't want i just like imagine yeah. you guys you guys are in the gf and the first weekend of october and something like that happens yeah that was i don't think anyone in yeah the so that's just that, like that's where it needs to be i think you know we have these teething issues and like that for sure shouldn't have been a simbent and we've seen a lot of um issues that shouldn't be sin bins or penalties and they do but it needs to be a a level out where yeah. we, we can sort of go well okay that's definitely a sin bin and come on man that's not a sin bin yeah because it's almost too black and white at the moment yeah. isn't it and then you get all like joey <laughs> they blowing up hey uh milestones are you you're not too far off the the big three orange yeah big close i'll get i'll have to play almost every game and every game deep in the finals yeah is that something that motivates you mm -hmm. or it not really uh, not really like the team motivates me more now than ever like the team success and it has been for a while like the individual stuff I think once I stopped playing rep footy yeah because it was, it was funny once you play rep footy um, and experience it you know you definitely it's, it's, you know I've been lucky to do that and, and you know win Origin and win a World Cup but it really is an individual thing for you and your like your family and, and the guys you're with for that few weeks or you know the World Cup it's basically saying you're the best in your position at the time. It's, uh, it's yeah. cool. Like, it's so cool because it's like sort of, you know, to it's pinnacle. Yeah. yeah, to represent countries, that's the highest thing you can do. Like, yeah. That's and it's good for you. Like you pursued this dream for so long and this career for so long, and to get to the top and represent your country, it's such a such an honor and a privilege and like um, not a relief, but like a you know you did it, man. Like it's it's cool and it's cool for you and your family. They've obviously been there for your whole journey and seen how much work goes into it. Yeah, but. But when you get sort of through that and you have club success and team success where you, where you live and breathe every day, it's sort of like, you know, a little part of me would trade all my rep jerseys back 
yeah. to have more team and club success because it, you, know, you spend like you said, you spend longer more, period of time. You yeah. spend more time with your club and your teammates than you do your family at, at stages. And you know, I know how hard it is in NRL to get to the top and win, and and how rewarding it is when you do win. It's sort of like so that's what drives me, like getting the team team success now. Mm. So does having that ring like make you chill a little bit more? It probably, it probably more does. It probably oh, does. Okay. Like, yeah, it, it probably would. Like if I was because you know, if you got jagged in that GF, like, yeah, it could be a different story. Yeah. Like, like, and. And maybe if I didn't have rep jerseys too, I might it might not be it might be different, right? But I only know the way I feel now and what I've had before me in my career. And off the back of that, it's all like my p- perspective is I'd trade those things back, those individual stuff, to have greater success as a team, more success as a team as a mm. club. Because I know how rewarding it is when you have that success. Like it's you work from November one or whatever it is to October one. And to get that job done is just the best feeling you ever have ever. So mm. that's so that my individual stuff, like for sure, if it happens, I'll be stoked. Another thing from me and my family, like, because that's for us. Yeah, like, boys get to take part in it, but really, it's from for us to celebrate. Like, for me. Mm. But like, I'd rather have that. Gee, should be a nice way to go out, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Fairy tales, yeah. You know what I mean. Like, whatever happened to that weight, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, boys. I uh, just want to say thanks for jumping on. Almost at the two hour mark, so appreciate your time and wish you guys all the best. Obviously, I go for the Roosters now, so <laughs> hope you guys don't win. But thanks for jumping on. Appreciate it. Cheers, Cheers boys. Thanks for having me. <laughs>